What's your best file me? I freaking dare you moment from work. My 22nd birthday I was working at a bookstore in the King of Prussia Mall. My college girlfriend of 4 years had broken up with me earlier that night. It was around 7-8pm of a busy weekend night when I noticed a pretty awful smell. I glanced over at my manager working the other register and could tell he smelled it too. But we continued to power through a line of antsy customers. Once we cleared the line a woman came up to me red faced and laughing in shock and embarrassment. She said she had walked into one of the aisles to find a girl about 8 years old taking a crap on the floor. I looked over at the manager who clearly had heard as well and said, Dave, you can go ahead and fire me, but I'm not cleaning that up. I believe that fesses counts as a biohazard and you legally need to be trained have the correct equipment to clean it up. Not me but my dad. So he was delivering catering to an office one day and the receptionist obviously fricked up. She was yelling at him in front of her bosses saying that he was too late, on time with proof, and that the order was wrong when it wasn't. She was making such a big issue of it and then said she was going to report him to his manager and get him fired. So my dad said see if I care and gave her the number. She called and my dad picked up because he is not the manager but the owner. Everyone in that room was laughing at her. Sorry for formatting on mobile. I hate people who refute actual proof like that. I ordered IT for 12. You ordered it for 3. Here is the email you sent me. Here. See. It says 3 p.m. No you are still wrong somehow. Freaking infuriates me that people can just ignore evidence like that. Used to work at a liquor store with two extremely unreliable people who love drama. Both of them got into dong measuring contests with the manager and quit on the spot, leaving me and a skeleton crew to manage the rest of the crazy summer season. The rest of the crew spent a good portion of their shift sitting on pallets, doing coke in the bathroom and or drinking on the job. So I was the go-to employee suddenly, comparatively to the two drama queens. I was a very well behaved employee, but I would sometimes take my tips and pop over to the coffee shop next door while on the clock. One time I stepped back into the store right as the manager came into the other entrance. I just stood there and looked at her. She kind of shrugged helplessly, and let me do it for the rest of the summer. Comma and let me do it for the rest of the summer. But as soon as the 22nd of September rolled around, she was like frick that noise. Owner of the company was avoiding the meeting where I get my raise. I waited over two weeks. Finally told my supervisors I'm walking out the door if they don't fix this. They told me to go talk to him. I told them they were the supervisors and it was their job to do that. Not mine. I'm in an understaffed position at a job that is very difficult to fill. If I left then the rest would have gone too. They knew that. I worked retail in college and was a really valuable employee because I worked in three departments including loss prevention, which was really hard to get good people. In one of my not LP shifts my debt had clean bathrooms and the closing duties rotation. I go in and clean the men's room and it's mostly fine. I go to clean the women's room and it looks like someone has literally thrown a crap grenade in the handicap stall. There's a line about 3 feet up the wall where everything below the line is covered in a fine layer of crap spray. I noped out of that. We had no special equipment, like not even gloves, and told the store manager he needed to hire someone. He went on a huge rant for 10 minutes and people gathered to watch him yell. At the end I told him I could get a job at any of the stores at this shopping center and I wasn't cleaning that up. Then I signed out and I left. I called in my manager the next day to check my schedule and everything was fine. Crap bullet dodged I guess. Wasn't physically at work but it was on the phone. Day before my mom is feeling bad. Calling me at work and giving me updates. I finally convince her she needs to go to the air. And I tell her to stay put and that I will be there soon to take her. Of course, she insisted that I stay at work but whatever that's my mom. I'm freaking taking her to the air. BTW mom has history of bad health and issues and whatnot. I tell my direct manager I'm leaving, and she's like fine whatever. Make up the hours. Fine. Next day and my mom is still not great but it's fine. I got to her meds, but they still need to run other tests. So I decide to stay home with her and take care of her and run errands. Medical related stuff. For her. I call out leaving a message with our customer service desk. But soon after I get a call from a manager of a different department, we'll call her CM, asking why I called out. I tell her I need to take care of my mom, 
CMO what's wrong with her? I'm sure she'll be fine at home. Mia no. I left early yesterday to take her to the air. And she's still weak. CM continues to try and convince me my mom is fine. And I need to come in. I give in and tell her all the details. CM is unrelenting and finally finished with the cherry on top. I'm sure your mom would rather you have a job to come back to. Hum well no B you don't know my mom. You don't know her health. You don't know anything. I know you're a mom. So that's surprising as heck for you to say. I hope your children find themselves in that situation with a crap manager. And I hope they use the same ideals you're preaching. I answered her with C but I can go out and get another job. I can't go out and get another mom. I'm staying home today to take care of my mom. She said something about seeing me the next day in an attempt to end the convo and say bye so I said yay we'll see how she's doing said goodbye and hung up. Felt great cause I'm normally a pushover. But not when it comes to my mom. I held firm and kept my composure. So she couldn't really say I was rude or anything either. But she was P-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-I-
I have two children under the age of 5. Stuff happens beyond my control. I don't really care about some antiquated policy that should be used to measure machines not people. In addition, I'm here because I want to, not because I need to. But thanks for letting me know about this policy. I feel better knowing. Manager looks at me and just goes okay then. Company got rid of the policy two months later. I posted the story on another ask reddit about calling my manager a C and walking out. Her higher up called me in and I decided to at least give my side of the story the next day. It became evident she didn't care much so I told them it didn't matter and I quit anyway. In the best reversal of a classic movie line the supervisor said you can't quit because you're fired literally as I was walking out. My co-worker about a year ago. He worked the pizza station at our restaurant, and was a good worker. He was just about the only one left that rolled and made good pizza, but he was a huge stoner and always showed up high. My sous chef always thought he was doing lower quality work than everyone else because of appearances with that, but he was a great worker. One day he had forgotten to wrap some pizzas and they spoiled, and my boss really felt like going off. He yelled at him for a long time and then told him he was fired. My co-worker just looked him in the face and said you can't even fire me and just kept working for the rest of his shift. The next day, Sue's chef walks up with his boss, our department head. She listens to the entire story, says to remember to wrap the pizzas, and walks away. I thought it was the funniest crap because if he'd accepted it and just gone home, he'd have definitely stayed fired. He just said no to getting fired and worked another year there. Worked as a chef for the last year, left a place due to college as the hours were way too much, 40 plus hours a week, and put that on top of full time uni didn't have any time off. Friend recommended a place that was closer to home than most other restaurants so applied and got the job within a few hours. Not too weird where I'm from as not a lot of properly trained chefs and always new businesses opening. I knew immediately that I wasn't staying the second I walked in. It was like something off kitchen nightmares, fridges stank and were clearly improperly stacked so dangerous to boot. The head chef I was supposed to work under greeted me and showed me round the dingy small kitchen. His whites were stained and filthy and given this was 8am clearly weren't washed and I don't know how long. Grease and dirt everywhere with no ventilation and broken equipment. So he shows me the menu and with no explanation or description of how to do certain tasks, like spice mixes for example, tells me to do the meats for lunch. I get to the meat fridge and see at least half the meat is off so I call him, over to show him the green slimy pork and beef rotting in its own blood. His face changed immediately and stated bluntly it's fine. Slice it down and no one will notice. Obviously I refused and went and grabbed a bin. He grabbed me by the arm and pulled me back you throw that out you're fired. You're not wasting that. I simply went picked up my knives, toolbox and car keys and walked out. Got a call from the manager berating me for leaving and how disappointed she was for hiring me. I told her the problems I found and I wasn't in the business of attempted murder and hung up. Called to he environmental health office. Here in Northern Ireland if a chef calls they are generally down in a few hours. Asked me to meet them there and show them the problems. I have never seen a place get shut down as fast in my life. Within half an hour she had a written document of closure and had to testify in court due to reckless endangerment charges as well as a litany of other illegal infractions. Working at an important political building. Been there for about a year. Other employees have been there for decades. 99% of the staff is black. Including myself. None of us have ever been written up. New manager shows up. An older white lady with a complex and starts berating people for not doing their jobs, when they are very clearly doing their jobs as the job is defined. She berates people until they back talk, then fires them for insubordination. She fires 10 out of 13 people, all black, and replaces them with white workers. She approaches me and begins berating me. I am onto what she is doing. I do not react. My lack of reaction leads her to tell me I am being insubordinate, and I am fired. That was my I freaking dare you moment, although I did not say it. She fired me. Six months later, she's been fired, her supervisor is fired, and his supervisor has been demoted to the worst position a supervisor can have. A lawsuit has been filed that resulted in about $100,000 in damages to the victims. Bet she won't do that crap again. Bet you or she will. Ha ha ha. I'm an electrician. 
Boss son said my clothes are too dirty to wear to work. Told him these clothes were clean when I first wore them to work. Told him buy me new 1s or fire me. That was a year ago. Still wearing the same PVC glue stained clothes to work. Not a threat of being fired. But back when I worked at EB Games I got out of a write up by arguing with my boss for half an hour and basically claiming that writing me up for what I did would be morally bankrupt. I told someone who wanted to trade in a broken console and buy a new one that he was actually still under warranty with Walmart and could get his console replaced for free instead of getting a reduced amount of trade in credit towards a new one. The receipt was still in the bag and I'd noticed that the warranty expiry date hadn't passed yet. He told me that he didn't feel like jumping through all the hoops Walmart had been putting him through with their warranty requirements, but he thanked me for looking out for him. Afterwards my boss told me he would write me up for it since he claimed I was trying to send the customer to a competitor. I spent the next half an hour basically telling him that writing me up would be setting a standard where employees had to put a sale before the needs of the customer, and that not letting the customer know he was under warranty when I knew he was for the purpose of not losing a sale was manipulating the customer to get their money instead of trying to meet their needs to the best of my ability. Eventually he agreed not to write me up but told me not to do it again. I told him I couldn't promise that I wouldn't if a similar scenario came up. But I think he was sick of fighting with me and he dropped it. I also had to correct this manager in front of a customer after he lied to them about a product in an attempt to make a sale. And nearly got written up for that as well. I'm honestly surprised it never got to the point of him threatening to fire me since I argued with him over stuff so often. But he once actually told me that he liked how I was willing to speak my mind so I guess he might have respected it a bit despite trying to write me up for it so often. Though I'm pretty sure where I worked they had the 3 strike policy so any write ups would have contributed towards me getting fired if they'd kept. I also worked for EB Games at one point, and can confirm that roughly around mid to late 2011 the company took a nosedive in ethics. I refuse to give them my patronage now. In a previous job, working in IT support, we randomly had to ask people to go through to a feedback line and leave a voicemail about how the service was etc. Generally, it doesn't sound all that bad, but when you factor in people call you to fix their computer and or don't care, plus the fact our company was very much about look at all this good feedback, when nobody in their right mind would put through a person who's had the worst time on the phone, it came across a bit sales-like, so I refused to do it. In terms of fixing things, my numbers were high and I did my job with a smile. I told the bosses my concerns ray the above, but was flatly told, if I didn't do it, A. I was the only one refusing and B. I would be fired. After a few weeks of crapping myself, I thought frick this, I know what is right and what is wrong here. I'm not doing it. If I get fired, they'll lose somebody on the floor who does a high amount of actual work, so frick them. Several months later and a, I wasn't the only person not doing it like they'd said and b, nobody got fired about it, they just wanted some stupid figures to show the customer how awesome we are, depth sites that not entirely being accurate. It eventually came to a head, when I went into a promotion interview, I was told by my boss your fixing figures are good, but this feedback thing is going to be held against you, and you won't be getting this job, if you apply for it. I told her that I'd wait and see, because I again think she is incorrect. I took the interview, it was done by people from outside the office thank god, and I was offered the job, and took it. I still had to work in the same office, but moved away from that end of the work and got a pay rise. My boss congratulated me afterwards, and I never felt so good. I used to work in a chain pastry store that's quite popular in the UK in my branch I was the only team member that picked up overtime, the only member who showed up on time and the only member who actually worked hard. I was ill twice in the whole year that I worked there and my boss said that I wasn't allowed any holiday when my contract said that I was allowed it now this boss always left early and never clocked out when he left. So the system would automatically clock him out at the end of his contracted hours for the day so as you can tell. I was pee off the other manager was a bully and picked on me non-stop. 
When I reported her to the lazy boss he told me that if I reported her to HR he would have me fired I laughed in his face and told him go ahead. Good luck finding another employee like me in this shit show of a town then I called HR in front of him reporting him and the other manager and quit on the spot. HR gave me 200 pounds of compensation for the bullying and the money I should have had from the paid holiday when I handed my uniform in the next day the look on the manager's face was priceless this was in August. They're still being investigated by internal affairs now. D. I was one out of three dishwashers for a hotel and restaurant. So there was a lot of work for us. One of the guys never did any work. And the other guy only worked early morning shifts as he had multiple jobs. I finished all my duties. Walked outside for a smoke break. Manager of the restaurant area came out and threatened to fire me if I didn't go back inside right then and finish the dishes. I told him what his predicament would be if he fired me. He stormed off. Came back in 10 minutes later and there were maybe 3 dishes to do. And I was the only one working then so there was no way another dishwasher did them. I have a couple stories about this guy. Most from other people's experience while working for him. Boss promised me a raise for October. When I brought it up before pay day he denied having doing so. And also told me he is not getting his money's worth out of the work I do. Told him he doesn't pay me enough for it to be worth my time and gave notice. I was working in a cafe and I was on my own from tomb till 10pm and what made it better was that there was one chef in the kitchen and he was a temp chef so he didn't know the menu. Now we have something called kids time about 5-7 where there should be two servers and two chefs but the duty manager was on reception all day because that person was ill. As a result I decided to print up a little sign telling people service was going to be slow. During mid kids time there was a table of 8 people and I was mid taking their food out and there was a wrong order so I had to take this back to the kitchen. There was this lady waiting at the till and I was very apologetic every time I walked past her cause food takes priority. When I finally get to her she orders a soya capuccino. We have run out of soya. I can do skinny instead. She then says I'm sorry you have me waiting her for 5 minutes just to tell me you don't have the product. At this point I was so mentally tired of doing 3 people's jobs in one I said without thinking look I get paid minimum wage for this and I have currently trying to do 3 people's freaking jobs at once during our busiest time of day. Give me a freaking break if you want you coffee I will make you a skinny one but we don't have soya. Please just leave if you don't want to buy from here it would make my life easier now she played the good old card of I want to talk to the manager so I point her in the direction of the reception but just knowing my luck as she was complaining. The DM, who is chill, the general manager of the whole club comes at the end of his shift. It is a golf and health club. He comes over to me and says OP did you really swear at a customer of course I did I don't regret it I going to need you to come in during your day off for a review. I explain I have holiday that day so I am away. He tells me I need to go to it. This is the final straw because I was going to university in two weeks I had enough. I said don't worry no need because today will be my last day. No it won't be you need to give one week's notice. Me. And you need to properly staff your department so now you have no staff. Take off my apron and badge. Put it on the counter grab my phone and coat and leave. Most empower I have ever felt at that job so happy I left when I did. Managers of Reddit. What made you fire an employee on their first day? I was an internal consultant for a regional healthcare provider. I was integrating a smaller and newly acquired healthcare provider that was mostly residential homes for elderly individuals with moderate mental health issues. Technically I was also the interim director of this new division during the transition period. Once they were fully integrated I would step away and return to my consultant role. And during the transition period I was everyone's boss. I was at one of the site's reading charts and coordinating with the site's program manager about transitioning patient records to our system when I physically witnessed the program manager berate a patient for requesting something completely reasonable. It was something about requesting transport but the exact details escape me. Berating them would have been febotten regardless but the request was simple, reasonable, and easily granted. In our system this would have been a simple yes without any fuss. But even if it were a no it should have been delivered in a respectful way with an appropriate explanation. And then she immediately got on the phone and complained about the patient to a co-worker while making fun of them. In. Front. Of. 
me. I was sitting across the table from her. I looked at my assistant because I thought I was going crazy and her eyebrows were so high up on her forehead they merge with her hair. I fired her on the spot. To clarify, it wasn't the program manager's first day on the job. It was her first day as an employee of my organization. Not his first day, but an ex-co-worker, let's call him Ed, started working at another hospital that opened up run by the same system, was a smaller, slower place to work. One day the VP went in early one morning and talked to some night shift staff. VP asked Ed how his night went. Ed told the VP night was great. He got to watch three movies that night. Ed was fired that day. It is what happened on the first day but he didn't get fired until a bit later when we figured it out. Managed a MSP team hired a bright guy. All seems good on the first day. At the end of the first day he received a phone call where he announced his father has passed away. Two weeks of compassionate leave for funeral out of state later. He was supposed to start work again but called from the car park to say he's too distraught. This goes on for 3 more weeks until one day we got a phone call from someone looking for this worker. It was his father. As it turned out he's been running this scam where he gets jobs with multiple companies and pulls this same stunt getting paid during the probationary period regardless of what happened for as long as he can. He set up salary payments to multiple accounts himself and to friends to avoid detection from tax agency. This guy was smooth. Lied and cried. Conned a lot of us. Not sure what happened to him but we reported this to the tax agency for a case of tax fraud. Dang. He's actually pretty good aside from the fact that he told his father where one of his jobs was. Obligatory not a manager. But I was training temps for our help desk. I'd done this a few times and help desk manager told me to let him know if there were issues with any of the temps. While there were a few people I knew weren't going to be very good, there was never enough to get rid of them. Until one day I get a group and one lady is just kind of glazed over while I'm going through stuff. Everyone had their logins and was following along to get a bit of experience seeing what to do and then having the opportunity to do it themselves. After my demo is over, I have everyone come up and show me that they can do what I just went over. There's the normal nervousness of being put on the spot. People blanking for a second before I prompt them on what to do. Fat fingering the keyboard, etc. All normal stuff until I get to the quiet lady. She comes up and sits down and I wait for her to log in. And I wait. And wait. She's locked out her account. Were you able to log in at all to follow along? Number. Well that's annoying because seeing and doing at the same time really helps people grasp the concepts of what they need to do. But whatever. I unlock her account and have her log in. She relocks her account. The new accounts had temp passwords that were all the same like change this 01. I thought maybe she got a randomized one by mistake and reset it to the standard to be sure. She locks it again. The other two people in their training class are getting uncomfortable and I'm running out of ease the tension jokes. Reset the password again and really watch her. She's using hunt and peck to enter the password. So it's easy to see she's misspelling change every time she enters her password. This time I reset the password to password 1 and she's finally able to log in and change her password. It's the only time I recommended they get rid of a temp. Nice lady, but there's no way she would have been able to handle doctors yelling at her for the system being down if she couldn't handle entering her own password or speaking up when she had an issue. Not a manager, but was training a new guy on a plastic bag cutting machine. The kind of bags used for products like fiberglass, peat moss, or salt. These machines sometimes have plastic build up around the sealers and when this happens the machine needs to be stopped and cleaned. Usually this only takes a minute. Power off, engage kill switch, remove excess plastic, change teflon strip if necessary, disengage kill switch, then power back on. This was explained multiple times. Twice on the first night, he disengaged the kill switch and started the machine while I was working on it. Could have had my fingers crushed, or had it clamp on the tools I was using and send shattered pieces everywhere. Lucky for me the machine starts to vibrate a second before it actually starts and I was able to pull away quickly enough both times. I stopped the machine, grabbed my manager and my union rep, explained what happened and he was gone in 5 minutes. Frick him. Undisclosed charge for beating up his old manager, giving her a broken nose and fractured eye socket, for not approving a holiday request. 
We were a little late with his background check but he done really well on the interview and completed training without an issue. First full day on the job he comes in and I give him the tour and introduce him to his team and I instantly get the feeling that he's being shifty. Turns out not 20 minutes before his first shift he got out of his car at a traffic light and screamed at another driver who didn't go through an amber light. Imagine his surprise to see it was our reception desk security guard. Apparently he was really aggressive and threatened to slash his tires if he saw that car again. Two hours later, and about 10 minutes after I found out about that morning, his background checks come back. I had an employee call off on her first scheduled day. On her second scheduled day, she showed up two hours late. This was a sub shop. We weren't open yet but we had been and doing prep, baking bread, and building our sub trays for catering orders. We told her that this wasn't going to work out and she got pee. She started yelling that we were all racist buttholes and as she stormed out the door, she knocked over stacks of sub trays. We lost 15 trays to her tantrum. My boss went running out the door after her and the girl's boyfriend got out of the car and reached behind his back swearing and telling my female boss that if she keeps stepping to them that he would stop her good. We are pretty sure that he had a gun. My boss checked the license plate and came back in. We had all of this girl's information, address, phone, social security, etc. From the paperwork so with that and the security footage of her destroying the trays, we were able to press charges for the damage. I'm not the manager in the story, but I was there for part of it. Dude gets hired, starts training. During training, GM instructs him to take out the trash. He refuses, gets into an argument. Apparently, he didn't know that he was arguing with the GM despite the big, fancy name tag with general manager printed in block letters on it. Gets sent home. For some reason, he still comes in the next day, smelling of alcohol. He grabs food, this is a restaurant, without paying, right in front of everyone, including a manager. He then proceeds to start coming at a server because they couldn't tell him where the takeout silverware was. Not the server's job. This evolves into a literal fight and the police get called. We never saw him again after that. This was all before his first actual day of work. I'm a bar and restaurant manager. One day the new kitchen porter walked through the front entrance carrying a huge bag of cheese over his shoulder, which the head chef had told him to pick up. He walked through the restaurant and, right in front of customers, launched it through the hatch in the kitchen, flying through the air as everyone just watched open mouths. The huge bag of cheese landed hard in the deep fat fryer. The chef working near it got scalded in hot oil and had to go to A&E. He's the only person I've sacked on their first day. I'm mostly pretty chill but he was just a walking health and safety nightmare. Even after everything that happened he still couldn't accept responsibility or apologize to the chef he hurt. He's the only person I've let go without a hint of remorse or sadness. The safety of your team always comes first. Chief officer of a merchant vessel here. Technically, second in command of the ship after the captain. A seaman joined our ship while our vessel was berthed in Mobile, Alabama. He was carrying a plastic water bottle during familiarization rounds on deck with the third officer, and when it was empty proceeded to throw the bottle overboard. My Russian captain saw this, calmly asked me to call the seaman to his office, gave back all his documents, asked the agent to book him a flight back to where he came from. All of this happened in a span of 3 hours. That was very, very nice of the captain. Both giving him a flight back, and allowing him to disembark via the gangway. Well, second day for this one. Old guy, kept dozing off during training. Denied it when I addressed him about it and yet it kept happening. Fired him for it on day 2. Fast forward maybe 8 months. He emails me to let me know that he really had been falling asleep and I had been justified with the action I took. He realized there was an issue a few weeks after I terminated him because he fell asleep while driving and rear-ended another vehicle. Went to a specialist as a result and they found that the Parkinson's medication he'd started shortly before beginning training was making him narcoleptic. Said he had rectified that with new meds and asked for a second chance. Gave him the opportunity for a do-over. And lo and behold, he is a good employee. ETA. LOL at the assumptions being made below about lawsuits or overreacting, or being afraid of looking bad, when it's clearly an abridged version of an event to simplify it for the purposes of this thread. 
I stand by my original decision, just as I stand by deciding to bring him back after he offered me context and a me culpa. Also, to the kind comments about me as a manager, I learned what kind of manager I wanted to be by occasionally having a poor one myself. My staff are given forthrightness, clarity of expectation, and as much transparency as I can offer them. In return I want honesty, a reasonable level of performance productivity and good effort at doing their work well. I'm really glad you gave him a second chance. I think she kinda fired herself. She didn't show up, at all, in an actual work capacity. Her first non-training shift was opening on a Saturday. This place opened at 5.30am. So me, excited to sleep in because I opened MF, which was waking up at 3am to make it, got woken up at 5.30 on the dot because obviously clients called immediately. Whatever, maybe something happened. It sucked for me and the people trying to get in early morning workouts but I made it there and had it covered. The problem was when I tried to talk to her about it, she didn't even let me get started. She immediately started yelling at me that I didn't give her enough space for her personal issues or something like that. And then she emailed the VP of the company about how awful I was. I wouldn't have fired her for that. I tried to talk to her about it to find out why it happened. But I had no chance at all she just went all out scorched earth. All she got was being fired from a person above me. She started a fight with another employee, the other employee, the fiancé of her baby daddy. This man literally got a job for his girlfriend and his side chick for the same position, same location, and same schedule. I don't what became of that situation, but I had to break them up, and then call the police when the side chick tried to run the fiancé down in the parking lot and wreck three cars in the process, and then give a police report for that whole dang thing. I'm so glad I don't work security anymore. I want those years of my life back. This man literally got a job for his girlfriend and his side chick for the same position, same location, and same schedule. Some people just want to watch the world burn. Got through training, month long, and the guy had his first day on the floor. He was supposed to be setting up his computer how he liked it. I walked by because he looked like he was struggling. I helped him out and walked him through one of the programs and let him know it was okay to flag me down if he needed help. I proceed to help out three others then circle back to him. No progress made, this was 20 minutes later. I walk him through some other setup. This is all from written instruction from a manual. I go and help a few more people. Come back to see yet again no progress. I ask him what kind of issue he is having with the instructions. Come to find out he can't read English. All of our instructions and guides are only in writing. In English. It's a requirement on the job interview. I guess someone walked him through that too. I wanna know how he passed a month's training not being able to read English. Not a manager but saw this happen a couple of weeks ago. The local pizza place is frequent visit for my friends and I. They know our names and usual orders. A nice small town joint. New girl started working there as a cashier. Went up to the counter to get a few pies we had ordered an hour earlier. We were told 30 minutes. Turns out she had taken the order down over the phone and just didn't tell the cooks. Owner who is nearby said sorry about that palapata come back in 20. No big deal. Came back in 20 minutes and the new girl is doing dishes by hand. The pizzas are under a warmer. With her dirty soapy hands and no tray she grabs my pizzas and throws them into a box. In front of the owner. Little subs and dish water on the food. They fired her that instant. Our company photographed vehicles for dealerships so they could be posted online. We had pretty much one requirement. You had to be able to drive a manual. The company would train a person on everything else. A new highlight on their application about being able to drive a manual. They thought they could learn on the job. It took the manager training him about 30 seconds to realize how much of liability he was going to be as soon as he tried to move a manual car. We let him go on the spot. I did tell him that if he went and fully learned and came back and proved it to me, he could have his job back. He texted two days later letting me know he just couldn't get the hang of it. I witnessed someone get rejects before the interview even started. I was in the waiting area of a car dealership's service center waiting for my car. The waiting area was right next to all the offices for the mangers, sales guys, etc. So there's a young guy, early 20s, comes in, wearing dirty sneakers, car keys, 
and an untucked button-up shirt. Checks in with the receptionist that he's here for an interview. Manager comes out, greets him and says, You're XXX. Right kid confirms. Manager then confirms that he told the kid, when he applied, that he had to dress professional, not sneakers, tie required, shirt tucked, etc. It kid's like, yeah, I remembered, but figured it didn't really matter for just the interview. Manager basically said yeah, if you can't follow basic, direct instructions for an interview, this isn't going to work out and told him to go home. This all happened in the waiting area. Manager didn't even bring him into the office. Kid was like, are you serious? Then had to stand there awkwardly waiting for his ride to some back and pick him up. I remember working in a call center and something similar happened. Saw someone I used to go to school with come in for an interview in a track suit. The manager interviewing them had the whole thing over and done within about 2 minutes. As he was leading them out of the door he just casually said word of advice. Buy a suit and closed the door on them. I was a school administrator for a K-12 school. Had a new substitute teacher for a middle school class. She was an older lady, very old school elegant. I'm in the hall and suddenly a class full of 6th graders are running out of the classroom. I go busting in there expecting a brawl or a gun or something. Instead the substitute is standing at the front of the room in a pool of poo. She apologized and said her stomach was bothering her. She walked out of the room and down the hall leaving puddles of poo behind her. I call the custodian and we start with the kitty litter. Thinking my day could only get better. I was shocked when a couple of hours later a student came running down the hall to get me. I follow them to a classroom and there is the sub again. Standing in her own poo. Again. The admin assistant had told her earlier that of course she could come back after she got cleaned up. I gently asked her to leave. And told her we wouldn't be needing her again. So. The custodian and I cleaned everything up again. When I got home my wife asked me how my day was and didn't understand when I lost it after telling her it had been a crappy day. That's horrific. But at some point you need to settle for the indignity of an adult diaper over the shame of soiling yourself in public. What was she even thinking? My partner and I were training a security guard for one of the huge sites that we had. Everyone gets a work phone during the shift to use a liver track system and report every so often. After it gets dark, me and my partner lose track of this guy on this. We tried calling him but he wouldn't answer. After about 3 hours we found him on the property's playground swings arguing with his girlfriend, or ex, on the work phone. Apparently he didn't have a phone of his own so he took this chance to socialize. On training day, he couldn't believe that he was getting fired. I wasn't a manager, but a supervisor at the time. Dude second day on the job. He called in running late from his bartending job. Shows up at the job. Grocery store third shift. So amazingly drunk that he could barely stand. He was upstairs in the bathroom shirtless and covered in puke. I called a co-worker in to help me convince him to get a ride home. He refused to get a ride. He kept saying how he's got a kid for about 30 minutes. I finally told him if he doesn't get a ride home immediately with my co-worker, then I'm calling the cops. My co-worker apparently held him back from fighting me in the parking lot. The guy still holds a grudge against me. Oh yeah, not only was he going to drive home, but on a moped. Frick that guy. Semi NSW. Not first day, but first day without a trainer accompanying them. He managed crash a patrol car. That alone wouldn't necessarily have gotten them fired. The fact that it was into a school bus might not have done it if there were extenuating circumstances since damage really was minor and no injuries sustained by anyone on the bus. The fact his girlfriend was in the squad care might not have done it if he had bothered to get permission. However, since there was no permission, we moved from might not to probably so. The fact that both the interior and exterior dash cam managed to accidentally get turned off, almost impossible to do by accident, but his body cam managed to, most likely, accidentally getting turned on though, guaranteed it. The only footage taken from that cam that night was of the top of his girlfriend's head rapidly and repeatedly entering and exiting the camera's field of vision. So close that you could see details that usually you'd never be able to see on a person's scalp. Right up until impact caused the lens to shatter against her hair tie. The pictures some of the kids on the bus managed to get were just the icing on the cake at that point. Needless to say, at that point, 
I called my boss and got permission from my boss to end both a shift and a career that night. Became kind of an unofficial training point after that. No celebratory bravo Juliet's in the squad car. Why in the ever loving frick would anyone ever think that was a good idea? I fired a guy on my first day. I got a job as a shipping and receiving manager for a small warehouse. I had three people working for me. I was told in the morning to keep an eye on one of them because they like to drink on the job. Sure enough this guy ranked off beer after lunch and was drunk off his butt. The branch manager told me I had to fire him. So I did. He did not take it well. It was one of the most awkward moments of my life. Seems kinda messed up the branch manager didn't do it considering they had worked together for 5 plus years and I only knew the poor guy for a few hours. I suspect you were hired, at least in part, specifically so branch manager didn't have to fire his friend himself. Not a manager but an employee. I caught my manager masturbating in the office and he immediately fired me and personally shooed me off the office grounds. Gutted since it was quite a high paying job and let's just say I cannot recover from that incident. For those asking why I didn't report it for unlawful termination. Basically I was gullible last time, not knowing how to counter this situation so I was like frick it, but I don't regret it. At least I have a better job now. What a W. Holy crap. This is my backup account which I hardly use and it gets a gold after 3 years of trying. Customary thank you kind stanger. Not a manager but an employee who saw it all and was slightly involved. I had a front of house job a few months ago for a brand new performance arts center. And since it was a brand new establishment, they did training in a boardroom with 30 plus employees. One dude was just not cooperating. He kept falling asleep, moving around, and he argued about the gender based harassment regulations. The manager said there should not be anything risque posted inside your lockers because it's a common locker room and you gotta be respectful. He got upset and started a whole tirade about how it's his locker and no one should get a say on what he puts on or in it. He noticed halfway through training that he was probably on thin ice and tried to save his hide. He also noticed that I would fidget constantly, stand up to use the restroom, or do little hand aerobics with my pen or stare into space for minutes on end. I have ADD and had already told the trainers when I noticed we'd be sitting for 8 hours. So they turned a blind eye to my fidgeting. When they confronted him about his behavior, he dragged me into the issue by saying that if he was to be reprimanded then I should be too for being a distraction to my training. He was fired before his first day of work. Redditors who were fired in the first week of your job. How did it happen? The guy was looking for bar staff who could hit the ground running. I told him I don't much experience behind an actual bar. Just a limited one at race events. Like 15 drinks compared to 50. He said as long as you are good I don't mind. He gave me 3 shifts. I text on the Sunday to find out what shifts I had the following week and he says oh I asked somebody to tell you not to come back. Tell you what I'll give you another chance, you can do two more shifts. I am like alright, frick you but whatever. I turn in Monday I am on my own. The normal staff didn't turn in, I got everything ready between me and the cook. After my two shifts he told me not to come back because I wasn't experienced enough. Took me a month to track the bastard down to pay me. He stopped answering my call so I used a different phone and got him, so he was actively avoiding me. I used to do tennis court maintenance on an island in Florida at a resort. My first day, the shop pro was late and I'm sitting on a golf cart after brushing the clay courts with Monica Sellers just standing around waiting. She busts out with, want to hit a few balls so I'm down. How awesome is this? If you've never played with a professional tennis player before, you have no idea how fast that ball comes flying at you. It was like she was just practicing serving at me and I may have, being very generous. Tipped a couple maybe. Well the shop pro shows up 15 minutes later and they do their thing. Comes up to me afterwards tells me I'm fired because policy says the court maintenance cannot interact with the pros. Best thing I've ever gotten fired for. Yeah, wouldn't wanna foster a fun working environment. In college, I tried picking up a summer job at a furniture factory. I lasted one week. Over the 40 hour week, I was put into 22 different jobs. 
After finishing up on Friday, they let me go because I wasn't fitting in anywhere. They also weren't happy with me because I didn't show up on Thursday for the weekly off the clock staff meeting a half an hour before the shift started. The one I didn't hear about until they were chewing me out for not showing up too. Off the clock staff meetings are just the biggest possible amount of BS. I refuse to attend meetings unless I'm compensated for them. If I'm there, I'm being paid. I showed up to a restaurant for my first day and there was a notice on the door that they had been shut down. I have so many unanswered questions. Restaurant owners do not tell anyone if they are about to close, not even their managers. The entire staff will walk out and take everything not bolted to the ground with them. You were probably hired by a manager and they didn't have a clue. Hired as tech for a private investigator. They mostly did cheating spouses or insurance fraud. Second day I walk in to get started in my new office. Told I'm let go. Don't disclose why. Something about my background report and a state police matter. Never been in trouble. Never been arrested. I was so confused. So I pull my own records. Nothing. My last name is common in Portuguese Brazilian areas. They had mistaken me for another woman. Same name as me and of similar age, who had quite a lot of bad behavior. I wonder how reputable they are if they didn't think to not only cross check the ages or go by last four of the social but, at least the state police weren't investigating me. Which would explain why they were confused when I called them hysterical asking if they needed me to come in for questioning. This doesn't sound like a very good investigating agency. When my wife deployed I got a job at a warehouse in our hometown and signed up for a 55 hour work week job. I worked 6am to 5pm 4 days. Then on Friday my boss asked me to stay from 6am to 7pm. I said I couldn't because my son's daycare closed at 6 o'clock, but I would stay until 5.40. He called me a slacker and demanded they'll have one of my in-laws pick up my child for me. I left at 5.40 and he called me to tell me I was fired. Frick that guy. The job required specific licenses and technical knowledge which I said I didn't have during the interview. They hired me anyway. Three days in and the director of the company finds out that I didn't have any and I was fired. Co-worker of mine had to fire a new employee on his team on day 4. The new hire brought her girlfriend to work, who was not employed with us, and she sat in the lunch room on her laptop, working on god knows what. This occurred for two days before anyone realized she didn't work here. We told the new hire to tell her to leave. She said, if she goes, then I go. They both left. I was working as an intern for a law firm and was tasked with moving a whole bunch of boxes full of legal documents from one storage warehouse to another. The warehouse they were in was damp and moldy and generally awful and after one day of being in there moving boxes out I fell super sick the next day. My third day. They essentially told me to either come to work tomorrow or never again and I didn't come in and never called again. Didn't end up getting paid for my two days of work either. Should have been a call to Osher. I got fired from a landscaping job after two days. Supervisor told me my work was fine but that I didn't chat enough. Maybe I would have been more willing to chat with him if he hadn't been hanging out on the porch naked when I showed up at his house on the second day to drive to the work site. Seems like he was looking for people he could bond with and then violate during the date. The manager hired me for back of house at Pizza Hut. One night it became apparent that there were too many people working back of house and we weren't all needed. Last one in, first one out. People that have no idea how to staff a business make me insane. Day 2. I was fired because we can clearly see you aren't getting it. This was at a deli. They never actually showed me anything and left me on my own to serve customers during a lunch rush. Nothing was labeled to tell me what it was and their selection was huge. The customers were actually very nice about it and pointed to what they wanted. But when they finally returned they yelled at me in front of customers for the place being untidy. The owner turned into a demon woman when she told me to clean their meat slicer and I asked for training. When I was let go she bellowed and returned that uniform. And make sure you wash IT. A friend and I ran the uniform over with his car several times. I then dragged it through the mud and posted it through their letterbox when they had closed. Ha 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 I love the last bit. I was working as a bookkeeper for a local middleman construction supply company. They bought things like toilets, 
fixtures and would sell them to construction companies. My job relied solely on the incoming vendor invoices of the day so I could record them, do their markup, and send out invoices to their clients. I started on a Monday and the following Monday was a US federal holiday with no mail so they told me on Friday that since there was no mail it didn't make much sense for me to come in because there wasn't much to do and I was new. Okay cool. Monday afternoon, there's a message on our answering machine. This was years ago, and asked if I could call them back. After doing so, I got reprimanded for not showing up to work by the same guy who told me to take the day off, and told me not to bother coming in again. Applied for job at Jimmy John's. Went to final interview and was given the sandwich list. Told you better memorize this or else, you start tomorrow. I looked at the list that was twice as long as the actual menu, said this job won't be for me, but thanks. I'll look elsewhere. Thanks for the opportunity. A week later I was called and told that I was fired for not showing up. Was hired as a bartender. A job in which I had plenty of experience. First day on shift, they assigned me to filling up helium balloons for their night party, along with one other girl, rather than mixing drinks. Whatever, I'll do what I'm asked. Hundreds of balloons later, my fingers were dang near severed from tying off the stupid things by hand. But I was finished. They told me to go on home. Didn't hear anything about my next shift. So I called the owner after a couple of days to find out when she wanted me back in. She says all of the balloons you filled up came down from the ceiling way before midnight. If you can't even fill up a stupid balloon I'm not going to trust you to make drinks. 1. They're unrelated. 2. How exactly were you able to determine which balloons I filled versus the other girl? 3. Frick you. My fingers hurt just thinking about it. Sorry to say, but they just used you to fill balloons for one day because no one else wanted to. They never had any intention of keeping you around. Failed the mandatory new hire drug test. I've never done drugs. It could have easily been an error on the testing side of things. I've had a lot of bad experiences with occupational drug testing people. Print shop. One of the senior employees was deaf. I don't know sign language, and I told them so directly when they asked during the interview. They hired me anyway. Three days into the job I was fired because I couldn't talk to the senior employee without writing notes back and forth. I was two weeks in at Taco Bell on campus. They hired me on the spot and had me come in the next day. I showed up and clocked in. The manager gave me a brief 30 minute tutorial on how everything worked. Then told me to clock out for 15 minutes until their labor caught up with sales. So I did and came back in. They put me on the line and during a rush I was a little slow. She got pee and told me to do some dishes. After about 5 minutes of that she made me clock out again for another 15 minutes. I came back and did more dishes and ran the deep fryer for the rest of the night. Every 20-30 minutes she had me clock out and take a break. I was scheduled a 6 hour shift and took an hour and a half of breaks. This was a common theme over the two weeks I worked there, but I'll be damned if I didn't take home my pay in free, custom made Taco Bell every night. Dude I think you were an illegal employee. I was 18 and moving to a new town to go to college. I wanted a part time job for extra money, so a couple weeks beforehand I applied, interviewed and was hired by a telemarketing company, evening and weekend hours, exactly what I was looking for. A week before I was to move I showed up on a Saturday and did the training program. The manager said I did great, she really seemed to like me, she said your first day is a week from today. I said I can't start then because that is the day I'm moving. Can we push it back one day? She said no problem. I get a call from the same manager on Wednesday reminding me my first day is this Saturday. I say no, it's not, it's Sunday, I'm moving on Saturday, remember? That's right. My mistake. See you on Sunday. Moving day arrives. It's the end of the day. I go out and grab some fast food for dinner. When I get back there is a message on my answering machine. It's literally the first message I have ever got in my own place. I was living with my parents before this. Who could it be? This is Jane with XXX Telemarketing. I don't appreciate having my time wasted by someone who's not responsible enough to show up for their first day of work. This is your official notice that your employment with us is terminated. 
Jane is the person I spoke to a week earlier, and on Wednesday, that said my first day was Sunday. Frick you Jane. 16 years old, I got a job picking tomatoes. Fired on the first day when they realized I was colorblind after picking all the green ones. I pressed the wrong buttons on the till and sold a 50 pound watch for 50p. My boss made the right decision there. I mean if this was your first day or even first couple of days running a register by yourself is more the fault of the manager, unless the transaction was in cash, then you probably should have noticed you were giving back a lot of change. I made it explicitly clear at every point of the hiring process that I would not be able to work weekends, and then they scheduled me for a weekend. My brother was asked to think long and hard between going to a final for a 400 level university course and showing up at his minimum wage job. He didn't have to think too hard about it. 16 years old. Day 2 of work. Hired as a busboy for a fancy restaurant. Cleaning up a table of food, drinks, and stuff. As I finished up, I tripped on my two long pants and dumped a whole tray of all the food and drinks all over several people that were very important. Got fired right on the spot. Oh man, that sucks. I brought a PB&J. Turns out the manager was very allergic to peanuts. I worked at a grocery store deli for like 2 weeks maybe. Each product had its own 8-12 digit code, only nothing was scanned and manually entered. The product codes weren't with the product but instead were on little bits of paper, like post-it notes. Scattered all around the deli walls. Sorry but I can't memorize hundreds of product codes in 3 shifts, while also trying to figure out what meat is even what. I had a kidney infection and wasn't able to work over my university's October break. When I told the manager owner I was very ill and had a doctor's note, he told me to not bother coming back. He was clearly in butthole, so I think it was for the best, but it didn't help my self esteem at the time. I was happy when his store went out of business a year or so later. Pizza shop. Second day there. Thursday. I ask the boss when my next shift is. He says Sunday evening. No problem. See you Sunday. Show up Sunday. Fired for not being in on Saturday evening. When I say I asked when my next shift was, he says I should have checked the schedule. When I ask where it is, he pulls a napkin out of his pocket and shows me. I told him he can keep his crappy upstate pizza and away I go. There was a guy at my old job who was fired while training when he got caught stealing from the honor system snack money jar in the break room. He claims he needed gas money to get home and was gonna pay it back. Sad either way. I got a job at a framing store. First day was a Monday, and I came in to do paperwork and train on the awesome pneumatic tools we would be using. I looked at the schedule, and noticed that they had me opening the following day, Tuesday, at 10am. Ordinarily, this wouldn't be a problem, but I had a second job serving at a coffee house bar music venue. I'd be working Monday nights until 2am, and wouldn't be able to get up early and make the hour long commute to be there on time. When I interviewed and accepted the job offer at the frame store, I had specifically blocked Tuesdays off my availability. I mentioned this to the manager, who said it's no problem, just come in on the next scheduled shift, Wednesday. So I show up bright and early to begin work on Wednesday, and the first words out of my manager's mouth were sorry dude, but I'm gonna have to let you go. Apparently, I was hired to replace another employee who was a total piece of crap. And he knew somehow that I was his replacement. When I didn't show up that Tuesday, the pose called the district manager, who in turn called my manager. The district manager told him unequivocally to fire me for a no call no show. Disheartened that I somehow managed to lose a very promising job through no fault of my own. Paid way more than I could get in my college town. I went into work at the coffee house. When I got there, the assistant manager broke the news that the coffee house was closing down because the owner didn't want to operate two separate businesses. So I guess I lost two jobs in one day. I worked at an up and coming coffee shop for a total of six days. I had recently lost my job and had worked at a Starbucks before, so I figured it would be the same sort of pace. I made an effort to be as kind to customers as possible, take down orders and make them exactly as asked and get it all done in a timely manner. I thought I was doing great, 
The owner would occasionally step in and help when it would get busy but she was easily distracted and would religiously make the wrong drinks. I was pulled into the office on my last day by her husband who asked me how I liked the job then proceeded to tell me that his wife believed I wasn't a good fit. Mostly because I was late, never happened, and had trouble remembering orders. Also untrue. Now I occasionally stop by and order a coffee and pastry and relax in the awkward tension while I watch the owner continue to hand out the wrong drink orders. Newer to a guide who, on one of his first tours, said watch your step because much like your lazy wives in bed, these rocks won't move for you. Fired 0.03 seconds after. Not fired but once I didn't pass my probation training week. I was working for a British health insurance company and the woman training me was really bad. She'd turn up late and smelling of booze and didn't explain anything very well. She forgot to request my access to the computer system and I was struggling to pick up anything of my role. When I spoke to someone about this they said thanks we'll look into this and then the next day on the Friday I got pulled in at 9.30am and told I'd failed to pass my probation phase. They told me it was because one day I'd had a bra strap showing. I'd worn an off the shoulder jumper with a vest top under it but nobody told me this wasn't allowed and there was nothing in the staff handbook, and I hadn't shown effort or willing during my training. The feedback from my trainer was written up and it was all complete crap she'd turned around all my comments about her behavior on me. Frick her. Lucky escape if that's how they treat their staff. I was fired from this crappy organic grocery store in Pittsburgh the first week. They wouldn't tell me why, just that it wasn't working out. Later someone I knew socially who also worked there at the same time told me the manager told him that I was fired for being fat and sweaty. I worked next to a pizza oven and they would open the doors and turn off the AC. Also it was the middle of summer, like a year later they went out of business. From what I understand they had a huge turnover. What annoys me the most is why did they hire me if they didn't want a fat person working there? Happened to my brother but he was hired as an account executive for a smaller software company and by week 2 or 3 the company got a new CEO and the first thing they did was layoffs across the board. My brother was part of a team of 10 people or so that dwindled down to 3. He was there for less than a month and ended up getting a severance package. I got a job at a local taco joint. It was a slow day and I was training with the manager. We're in the back and the manager takes a chip dips it into a guac tub and eats it. I'm like cool, it's snack time so I follow suit and he looks at me and says you can't do that I have to fire you. I thought it was a joke, but then he fired me. It was so ridiculous that I wasn't even mad. WTF. Messed up something minor in a patient chart. Something completely fixable. Doctor yelled at me for the mistake. I apologized. Face down embarrassed. I was asked not to come back to work because I didn't look the doctor in the eye. Not my story, but a friend. He was hired at a factory job to do QA on an assembly line. All he had to do was look at the products coming down the line and remove any defective or foreign objects. Oh, did I mention he was the kind of kid that got car sick while reading or playing games? Within 3 hours of starting his first shift, he gets nauseous and throws up on the assembly line. They now have to shut production down while they clean up. They send my friend on a break to help him recompose. After an hour or so, he gets back on the line and within minutes throws up again. He was not asked back the next day. When I was a kid I was fired from Menards 3 hours into my first shift after they discovered I had worked at Home Depot. I never understood that one, but Menards was a private company so what I do? What's the most fricked up thing you've seen someone do at work and still not get fired? Sleep for 3 hours. I was brand new on the job, corporate thing, and my new co-worker came up to me on a weekend shift and said, I was up really late last night. I'm gonna go lay down for a few minutes. Three hours later, he woke up and came out to work again, without any measure of apology. In the interim, one of the people we worked for found him asleep, and told my boss, he got a warning. Close second being a co-worker that hacked the company's network, using the term somewhat loosely, to get an internet access password we weren't allowed to have, would have gotten away with it if he hadn't also changed their file structure to have folder names like. Frick you, I want internet access. He also got a warning. Ixkaoka closing early, not 5-10 minutes early, but nearly 2 hours. 
The reason was she just didn't feel like working. I've seen more than zero nurses mistreat patients, so I've seen too many. Unfortunately unless it's flagrant and there's enough eyewitnesses, and as long as it's on old people or severely mentally ill people who have little to no family support, nobody gives a flying crap. Nurse got caught with her hand in the sharps bin and it still took months to prove she was stealing narcs. I work in the healthcare field. Had one co-worker who never wasted his narcotics properly with a witness he would just have them signed out solo and say oh yeah, patient, didn't want them so I disposed of it with zero verification, and had a lot of liquid narcotics whose counts suddenly went mysteriously off after he'd been on shift. Somehow he did not get fired or even investigated, he wound up quitting after just a few months, good riddance. This unfortunately is way too common. At my last job they found a nurse dead in the bathroom from an overdose. Whilst working at a local hospital, a nursing student snorting a line of whatever, in scrubs, in a hospital bathroom, to post on snapchat, or the two housekeepers who engaged in a fist fight on an elevator, only to continue said fight as they arrived at their destination. Woman screaming at the supervisor at the call center when people were on the phones, cursing saying she would beat him up because he gave her too many leads. She just wanted the Glen Gary leads, not this Glen Ross Bulls. I didn't catch the person in action but I was the HR consultant so I did all of the new hire processing. Lady came in shaking like crazy, had to leave the processing to go home and get her id, came back high AF. Two weeks go by and she just stops showing up for her shifts. We also found used needles in the bathroom. She didn't die or anything. We checked in with her. But it's still so freaking sad. But yay. TL. DR. Lady shot up at work and got away with it. I used to work in a bar. One of the waiters, who was wearing an apron, would pull his nutsack out of his zipper and walk around lifting his apron and anyone and everyone that worked there. The customers never knew his balls were flapping in the breeze as he took their order. I worked from home at my last job and my co-worker would sometimes just not log in until like 11am and would just completely skip meetings that she was supposed to run. One time she missed a meeting with our boss and my boss just goes well I bet she was up late working so is coming in late. She was supposed to run. That's the bad part right there. Had 8 servers delivered very late one day and left outside the data center. Everything in boxes on a pallet. Janitor thinks it's trash, takes all of them to the trash compactor and crushes them. Each box weighed 80 plus LBS. They weren't ours but a company we contracted with. We had to buy all new servers and the guy didn't even get to write up. He had a family member on the board. Not mine, but something an old buddy of mine did 15 plus years ago. He worked for a really big gaming company that was just about to ship a major title. Like, major. Because of beta testing, there was code in the game that would disable the beta copies the day after the game officially dropped. His job was to make sure that code was removed before they burned all of the official CDs for the game's release. Guess who forgot to remove the code? The company had already burned tens of thousands, maybe more of game discs and boxed them up for shipment before my buddy realized his mistake and came clean to his boss. They had to reburn, replace, and rebox every copy of the game and do it in time to meet the launch date. Cost a lot of people a lot of extra time and grief but, ultimately, my buddy got to keep his job. For those interested, the company was Bethesda Softworks and I believe the game was Morrowind. Their offices were in Rockville MD at the time and I used to go meet my friend over there for lunch every couple of weeks. If I recall correctly he was in charge of coding the sky effects for the game. Well, that and removing the code that would brick the game after release. I wouldn't fire him. Keeping him on sends an incredibly strong signal to everyone that the way to handle a mistake is to admit it. That's priceless. Our department went for a team building overnight stay abroad. The next day when we were supposed to meet at the airport he was nowhere to be found. His phone was off. 
bosses rang the hospitals, missing persons report, you name it, a week later the bosses went back to the country to find him again, nothing, wife and child had he heard anything, week later he turns up for work like nothing happened, he had decided to jump on an earlier flight to Thailand for a week's holiday without telling a soul, couple of meetings with the bosses, never mentioned again, guess his wife made him feel it but that was never disclosed. There is essentially no way he didn't go there for freaky adult stuff. A guy who works at a local grocery store would get caught masturbating at work with the bathroom stall door open. He was caught so much that he was eventually relocated to the gas station. And he has a serious attitude problem because he thinks that it's because he's overweight. It's not because you're chubby, it's because of your chub. I work in the office of a major retailer. I have a co-worker who's made several negligent blunders that have costed the company millions in lost sales. He has regularly failed to monitor the flow of advertised goods until it is too late to react. Lost sales. He once decided that if someone he works with freaks up, it isn't his problem to fix it. He wouldn't even tell them about it so they could fix it. Of course, it quite literally is his problem to fix it. This caused lots of failed shipments and flows that, again, caused lost sales. He failed to monitor inventory levels on regular stock items. Sales obviously spiked during Christmas time, which has caused him to run out on half his inventory and thus lose sales. As of yet, he still hasn't fully normalized all of it. To my knowledge, he's only recently gotten a formal reprimand for that last one. How it took so long is beyond me. Meanwhile, retail floor employees are getting berated for not opening enough members accounts in two weeks. Crack the casing of the most expensive piece of equipment in the lab by headbutting it because he had anger issues. He was team leader for that section. Bonus points. He looked a lot like Phil Mitchell. Co-worker once asked me if I would help him photoshop a letter of recommendation before an interview. This man has an MD. He has an MD or someone helped him photoshop his diploma to say he's got an MD. I wouldn't say fricked up, but I work closely with the federal government, and the number of people just hanging around until retirement, doing jobs that have been obsolete for 20 years, is remarkable. There's a dude I know whose only job is to scan things, like scan paper into PDFs. He's a federal employee being paid $50,000 in. Literally do this job. As part of my degree I must work in a place my college chooses for a semester, but still pay college fees. I scan all day, do nothing else. I'm replacing a man who retired last year who was on 50,000 euros. I take a total of 2 hours off a day for breaks and have been told I am much more efficient than the last guy. Worked at Applebee's and this one server had decided she had enough of the bulls. She walked out in the middle of her shift, while she still had tables. Showed up the next day like nothing happened, and nothing did happen. She didn't get fired. She didn't get written up. She didn't get warned. She left everyone, including customers, high and dry as to where she was. I eventually grew to get along very well with her. That crap blew my mind though. My manager always showed up high and drunk at work, then would take breaks to smoke weed and buy vodka at the nearest sack. And he pretty much hit on every girl that was working. But obviously nothing happened to him cause he was the manager. Sack equals liquor store, in Quebec, for those curious. Some bozo made me a restaurant manager when I was 21. Very frequently after hours we drank from the bar and had late night cook-offs. Sounds like you improved staff morale and encouraged camaraderie in your staff. I'm leaving the job partially for this reason. My manager speaks to all the employees like they are idiots and despite multiple HR reports she still works here, talks down to people and belittles them, makes decisions and tells people to do things just to throw her weight around, and rather than letting people take sick days she makes them take it as personal days. Oh also when people try to call out when they are legitimately sick she will try to make them feel bad so they won't call out and guilt trip them. And if someone actually calls out she would treat them like crap the day after as payment for calling out sick like how dare you get sick lol. Uh, what an absolute idiot. The point of sick days is not do you feel sick but will you get everyone else sick which has a much higher economic impact. Your manager is garbage. This guy at the DQ I worked at did all sorts of crazy crap. 
He pulled my head and screamed at me. He pushed an underage kid with a lot of force. He called a 15 year old girl a nice piece of butt. This dude was 34. He threatened to kill his ex's dogs as well. I can probably think of more or expand on this stuff if anyone is interested. This guy came to us from Illinois because he started dating one of the managers at my location. He had been through the prison system for the last decade or so. Highlights are assault, arson on a car, and arson on a home. After he finally left, he would keep calling the store and hang up if anyone other than his ex answered the phone. He would come in and just stare at everyone that worked there. It got so bad that the GM started carrying a gun to work. I would watch him through the security cameras and he would nonchalantly knock things off of counters and stuff. Just make someone else clean up his messes like it was nothing. He was particularly creepy towards little boys that were with their mothers. He would compliment the boys moms to the kids and tell them that they needed to protect her. All in all, he was one fricked walnut. Was out to lunch with three co-workers. Collectively, there are two males and two females. We're all attorneys. BTW. One of the males is very into the other woman. She is also a hijab wearing Muslim woman. The male co-worker proceeds to get up from eating and starts to massage female co-worker's head. Her hijab starts to fall off. We all tell him to stop. He explained that he was getting the brain spiders off. I was mortified. She was. So was the other male. But, he continued working there. Wisconsin. Pretty nice hotel. Our room service chef. I get in for the night, and my co-worker is fielding a call of a very loud guest. I can tell it is going bad. Very bad. He hangs up, looks down in sadness for a bit, gets up and slowly walks to the kitchen. His next words were burnt into my head. Cook's name. Can I see your hand? Cook looks down and notices his band-aid is missing, and made its way into a pizza that went up to a customer. He said his wife had it in her mouth. No, not fired. That's why catering bandages are bright blue, easier to see. Had a guy in our collections department show up drunk and barefoot at a customer's apartment at 3am, screaming and beating on the guy's door. Dude's payment for the month was calmed, but the employee didn't get so much as a write-up. My grandfather was a computer technician at my dad's school when he was growing up. The man had no experience with computers since they were still kinda the new thing. This madlet interviews. Gets the job by spouting out buzzwords and at the end of the interview is like, Hey I'm a bit unfamiliar with this particular system. Could I have the manual to look over before I start there like yeah whatever. Guy aggressively reads this manual until he is an expert and knows everything about this computer. He held the job for years. He was probably just as qualified as anybody else in his area but with a will to learn. I work with a guy who claims to be a well-paid, well-traveled comedian. Problem is he is not funny, never performed in our state. He claims to be famous in Arizona and California. He walks with a club foot and claims to be a former marine. We hired numerous veterans and he avoids them. Maybe you're looking at the big venues. He's probably big in the club circuit. I'm here all week. Folks. The car dealership I worked at had an automated garage door that opened really fast and closed really fast, because the shop had AC and heat so they didn't want to waste either. Two mechanics go up to the door, one of them stands under the door and proceeds to instruct the other one to push the manual override close button so that it would close on his head. He wanted to see what it would feel like. He ended up breaking the motor and costing the shop $15,000 plus whatever his medical bills he may have procured. I'm not really sure. Not fired. I had a co-worker who sat down across from our supervisor, explicitly refused to do his job, then dared the supervisor to fire him. Most incredible meeting I've ever witnessed. He was not fired and quit on his own for a new job within a month or so. I knew a guy whose wife worked at a place called Happy Joe's Pizza. He just got out of prison after 26 years. He put a fire poker through a rim head's chest and killed him. His wife would let him in when they closed and they would frick on the make table and he said he would just shoot his load all over the meats and cheese regularly for 2 years. Glad I lived on the other side of town. Worked in a restaurant. Cook came in after his shift blackout drunk and high on coke. He was belligerent and upset for no clear reason. 
He grabbed a 10 inches serrated bread knife from the counter and was swinging it around. Eventually he picked someone specific to go after and started to move towards him and past me. One of the guys was moving in from behind to grab him so myself and another guy grabbed his knife arm and pinned it to the counter at the same time that the dude directly behind him put him in a headlock. We took the knife and threw him towards the door and told him to get the frick out. No one called the cops. I called the owner. He was not fired and worked his shift the next day. Back when I was in grad school there were a lot of older faculty who really hadn't done anything for years. No research. No grad students. Maybe taught one. Or no. Very specialized class. They came into the department whenever. Sat around and drank coffee and shit chatted. Maybe typed a bit on the computer. And went home. They also had the largest offices. They couldn't be fired nor forced to retire. Meanwhile, all the new faculty were running themselves ragged trying to get tenured. I was a sales manager, salaried with our yearly bonus mainly based on making budget. Another manager whose district was south of mine was about 25k short of making his numbers for the year so he places an order for a large corporate customer. Several pallets worth of products weighing well over a ton and has it shipped to a storage facility, all without the customer knowing let alone agreeing to it. After the new year he has it returned for credit, but not before the customer is invoiced and raises heck over it, yet he keeps his job, makes his number and gets his bonus, all because he kept his nose shoved so far up the regional manager's butt who was a colossal douchebag himself. So glad I'm no longer with that cluster frick of an outfit. My boss told a pregnant co-worker after she denied his advances. He was married too, that he was going to do what the sperm donor should have done and kick her in the stomach. Multiple witnesses attested to him saying this, including me, nada, come to find out it was because they were closing the business anyways so they couldn't be assed. I used to work in instrument manufacturing. There were these tiny heater parts that needed to be glued together. Well, one of the employees, sweetest lady, was new to that particular station that involved the heater part. All of her heaters kept leaking. Nobody knew why. They assumed that it was faulty parts. I had worked at that station before her and I came over to take a look. She was gluing the parts wrong. She was placing the heavier part on the bottom and the lighter part in top. To get a good seal, you obviously place the heavy part on top when you lay it to dry. Well, they got the engineers over to take a look. They told me I was wrong because that's not in the instruction booklet. I told them I had been building these for months and never had any problems and that they might want to consider changing it in the manual because it seems to be common sense. They continued to tell me I was wrong because god forbid they take the advice of a young woman. This one engineer was a gender based retard and he was in charge of this problem. They continued to trash thousands of dollars worth of perfectly good parts and this guy continued to blame the manufacturer of the parts. Sometimes I would work weekends with my boss. I asked him if I could please just work on one batch to prove I was right. He let me and guess what? No leaking. My boss tells the higher ups and the instructions are changed. I get zero acknowledgement in solving the case. Since thousands of dollars in product have been wasted, someone needs to take a hit. And that someone was the kind little older woman who had only been doing what the engineer told her to do. The person who should have been fired was that jerk who didn't want to listen to me. There was this guy, Habib, who worked at Spirit Halloween the year I worked there. And he was sort of a legend to me, because I somehow worked the entire season and only saw him on my last day. He would do these unfathomably stupid things that made a ton more work for everyone else, and at first had ticked me off. But I came to realize it was sort of just who he was or it was how he worked, and the stories really grew upon. Things like, our manager gave him a huge carton of wigs to put away, and rather than putting them in the wig section, he spread them throughout the entire store, which was considerably more work. When confronted, he denied he'd done this, then asked how the manager could know it was him. The stories went on and on. Maybe you'd have to be in that working environment to know why things like this were so funny. We had some of the absolute weirdest people working there, and the customers were always completely normal and understanding. The manager hated kids, and strongly disliked Halloween, so she was always pretty grumpy. It's hard to explain. Working at Spirit Halloween seems wild. My friend used to work at one but he left after catching his boss smoking M in the store. 
repeatedly sleep, not like a 2 minute doze, I'm talking hours, has been caught multiple times, was even filmed twice by a new hire, union won't let him be touched, not even a suspension. Our union rep walked into my cube to talk to a guy who was asleep, instead of waking him up or anything he just quietly said oh, I'm sorry and walked off to do whatever it was that he did, don't sleep at your desk is right in the union rules, come on, glad I don't work there anymore. Whenever the second assistant manager would get pee with an employee, which was fairly often, he'd talk a lot of crap about that employee to other workers and managers and say things like I'm gonna punch his freaking face in. He never did. He was all talk, but a person of his position saying the things he did about people. It was amazing he didn't get fired. Used to work at a federal research lab. We had a guy who used to come to work and BP off about whatever. He'd get mad the printer wasn't working. He'd be mad someone didn't water the research plots right. He'd be mad about politics. You name it. He used to say, and pantomime with his finger that he was going to shoot kill stuff or people that were bugging him. That's a bit weird by itself. But the bigger issue was he would also routinely drive to work with a loaded .45 on the front passenger's seat of his car. He'd tell people he had his gun in his car and he was going to get it one of these days when he'd had enough. It was actually illegal to bring a firearm onto the premises, at least at our lab it was, and I reported it to our HR person after a few times. I was starting to get worried he might actually do it. Turns out as I'm talking to the HR person, I'm the third person to complain about his bringing a weapon to work and threatening to shoot people in the last few months. Nothing ever happened, other than my boss and I actually made up an escape plan for when Jerry went nuts and started shooting up the place. I work in IT. We found a guy with a complete drive of pornography. HR investigated it. They never even contacted the offending employee and just had us remove it from the network. He got no discipline. We do community based skills for children with severe emotional disturbances. Many of these kids are also DCS involved. A co-worker of mine told a 4 year old with a severe emotional disturbance to stop being a little bee or your parents won't ever get clean for you. She said it because she was screaming and crying in the car. I know it sucks but you literally signed up for this. This happened to at least 2 other clients of hers that I know of. She was given a performance improvement plan. I work retail. There's a story in my company that someone at a different location than the one I work at once completely and utterly failed to close properly. They left the safe open, the alarm off, and the door unlocked. Guess what? All of the cash in the safe was gone the next morning. No one was fired. Not seen but heard. My grandfather had died 3 days prior and we had him cremated at the time and one of my co-workers said I bet every time you hear the song dust in the wind you think of your dead grandfather, let me tell you, I've never came closer to hitting someone than I did in that moment. That's funny to me, but still fricked up in the moment. While working at an utilities brokerage as a sales rep call center agent I worked with this girl whose work for the day would literally just email our boss at the end of the day to let him know what I had done that day. Our boss lived and worked in Thailand so he wasn't exactly able to oversee us with complete accuracy but we were supposed to email him at the end of the day with a report of what we had done and she asked me if she could write up the day for the two of us which I thought was a little odd but guess she was just trying to be nice. Eventually she stopped telling him it was me doing the work and I lost my job because she took all the credit. I hated that job. People who got fired for the stupidest reason. What happened? Worked at Best Buy in the mid 90s when I was 16. I worked selling computers and was pretty good at it. We also sold things like memory and hard drives that were behind lock and key. Part of our job was to take the tagged inventory from the trucks and put it on the shelves. This included said memory, so I close one night, put away all the new inventory, lock it up, and hand the keys to the manager. They do their checks of our department and we leave for the night. Next day I'm scheduled. I go in and the loss prevention manager said he has me on video stealing memory. I laughed and said, show me the video. Well I'm somewhat tall, red hair, and white. The video he shows me has an older, very short, white guy with a shaved head. He told me that it was me, and that I was fired, and only showed me the video once, and immediately turned off the monitor. Being 16, 
I didn't know any better, said some things on my way out, like frick you, frick this place, and the like, and I left. Turns out the loss prevention guy and his son were stealing for years to the tune over $250,000 and the guy on the video he showed me was his son. Anytime problems popped up of missing inventory, they just fired a random person to keep the attention away from themselves. When police arrested them, their house was loaded with televisions, computers, everything from the store, TL, DR, fired for stealing when the video was of the loss prevention manager's son stealing. I was fired for accidentally showing up for a shift I was not scheduled for and then leaving when I found out I was not scheduled for said shift. That happened to me, except instead of fired I was chewed out by the manager for a solid half hour. I quit a month later for mostly different reasons but that had something to do with it. I was driving cars for a shady dealer, under the table while I was laid off from my real job. Got a call that my uncle had attempted suicide and was in a psychiatric ward in a local hospital and wouldn't talk to anybody else but me. Told boss I had to roll. He said something like, your job comes before family. If you leave, don't come back. I left. The next morning he called and asked me why I wasn't at work. I hung up on him. My brother had emergency gallbladder removal. I called in to tell my employer I'd need to take a couple days off to help him since our parents were out of town for something. They started cussing me out and asked what was more important my job or family. Then the same guy tried calling the next day like nothing happened asking why I didn't show up for my shift. Dumbass. Someone was stealing from the register. I got blamed. Turned out to be the owner's brother, who blamed it on me. I was let go just before Thanksgiving. I never got my job back, but the owner did apologize months later. I hope you applied for unemployment. I once worked for a small private school. A new supervisor was hired, and she called an after hours meeting the Wednesday night right before Thanksgiving. One teacher didn't attend and she was fired. When the new supervisor was finally let go, I heard from the owner that they had 4 lawsuits from employees being wrongfully fired. Accept a job and notified them I would need X date off for my sister's wedding. Two months after the start date, came back from my sister's wedding and crap hit the fan while I was gone. Not my responsibility, but my name was on some of the changes in the document. Can that day for not being there when they needed me. Now you'll never be there when they need you. I took a job with a movie theater in high school, only accepted the job because they promised me a set schedule. Me and another co-worker worked it out where one of us was always on shift. About a month after I started, they handed me a new schedule starting at 2pm. I was in class until 3. Told them no. Got fired for my lack of commitment to the theater. Guy preparing to retire, who had been training me to take over his job for the past 7 months. Felt I was ready to take over completely. Boss was afraid to lose 30 plus years of experience and fired me to keep the old guy for a little longer. From what I understand there was a pretty big fight. Old guy was a wonderful reference for me with the new job I obtained, with a 20k plus pay raise, and begrudgingly agreed to stay on for another year. Old guy should have retired anyway. When my day comes to retire, I'm leaving even if I'm the only one who knows the network password. I broke my hand and got fired for asking to take a day off to go to the doctor. I never called in there once in the 5 years I worked there. 3 members of my family worked for the same employer and all 3 of us were fired when one of us broke their wrist on the job. Go to love right to work laws. Supposedly, I argued with the owner's wife about working weekends. I specifically told them I can work weekends, but cannot work any time with less than a day's notice. I'm not at your beck and call for $8 an hour, frick me right? I was fired for playing solitaire on my 15 minutes break when I was working as a receptionist. The doctor who owned the clinic was dumb enough to put that as the reason in my termination letter. I collected unemployment after he tried to appeal it. They explained in great detail how stupid of a reason this was for termination. Got fired from a public library for taking two carts to collect books from the outside drop box instead of one. The past few times I emptied the drop box on a Monday it required two trips, 
so I brought two carts instead. It turns out the matter of how many carts were used in emptying the drop box was a matter of a library board vote and I was in violation of a town ordinance. Mind you, I wasn't fired. I was placed on paid administrative leave pending a library board inquiry at which I was welcome to call witnesses. I couldn't keep a straight face, so I resigned. You must live in the most boring, safe town if anyone has the time to care enough about library carts for there to be an ordinance. I brought my own box cutter to work at a temp job I had worked for two days already because they refused to replace the blades in their box cutters, and got fired because it looked like a knife. The schedule was hanging off the wall and it was magnetized, everyone's names were little magnets. Someone knocked it off the wall and thought they put the magnets back in the right places. Naturally I didn't show up for my shift. I was fired the next day even after it came to light what happened because I should know what my shifts were. Met. ETA. Thanks for the love. Reddit. This happened over 20 years ago. At a medical insurance company. I didn't see them. Mostly because I was young and just didn't know that could be a thing. But I'd do it again. I wasn't looking for kudos. Someone needed help so I did what was needed. I didn't have any idea that it was against company policy. We certainly didn't cover it in my training class. Oh, and the lady didn't call her insurance company instead of 911. We were trying to solve an issue with one of her claims. I came back to her having an emergency after I'd had her on hold. I worked in a customer service call center for an insurance company. A customer called in and had a medical emergency. Probably a heart attack but I'm not sure. While I was on the phone with her, I used the phone in the empty cubicle next to me to call 9, 1, 1, and stayed on both lines to be sure that M's got to her. I was fired because A, I took too long on calls already and this was exceptionally long. B, I made an unauthorized outgoing call. And C, I gave the customer's personal information, name and address, out to the 911 operator. That is absolute insanity. This is the worst one I've read in the thread by far. My wife got fired once for giving a high level donor. She worked for an art gallery, a bottle of water at a big dinner and art auction. Her boss had insisted that there be no water at the event. But when the donor asked for water, my wife went and found some dang water. Boss found out and fired her the next day for insubordination. Hopefully she let the donor know. My father was in hospice care and his death was imminent. Asked my supervisor if I could telework for a few days so I could be with him when he passed. This was 2019 before telework became the norm. Was approved to TW but had to document what I was working on. Hour by hour. Not an issue since my dad pretty much slept due to medication up until he passed. My boss and I were both fired for not clearing this with HR before proceeding. Even though I had documented proof that I was doing company business for 8 hours a day while I was out. Ah, when HR means nothing more than a pack of tin put dictators who couldn't actually tell you what human resources management is to save their lives. My first job ever was as a dishwasher. I was so proud. I was 18. Of course, my parents didn't believe me so my mom called them and asked them if it was true. They fired me that night because they felt I was unreliable. I have yet to let my folks live that one down. My sister was dating this guy who was constantly accusing her of cheating. He would sometimes come into the restaurant she waited at to see if she was there. She got fired because he kept coming in too frequently and not getting anything. It was my second job after high school. I was 18 going on 19. I was a parts delivery driver for a local auto parts store. All the drivers had to report to her dispatcher she would tell us where to go and what to do. Basically my supervisor. She had at least 10-12 years on me so I was basically fresh meat in the store. After 4 months or so she started getting more comfortable with me. She would rub my shoulders try go give me back rubs would buy me lunch would text me on weekends inviting for drinks. This one weekend she was being a little too persistent in texting me so I politely told her that I was not interested. Well come Monday morning I got fired because apparently I had not been doing my job properly. Looks like you had a case for a sexual harassment suit, and those texts would have helped. 
I got a middle level position at the company where they boasted at how family orientated they are. They are the kind of company that has a small arcade and putt putt and ping pong table and encourage people to relax and play them. After a month of being there I decided to play some co-workers and ping pong since I'm pretty decent at it. The owner and his son ends up walking through the doors and sees me playing and challenges me. I play the son and absolutely demolish him. He got extremely upset and walked away after throwing the paddle at me. Later that week I was fired for not fitting the culture. Cool. When a company says family they mean a family you won't be a part of. They have their favorites already and you are in the way. Kinda fired I guess. Got a job offer and they wanted me to start ASAP. But told them I want to give my job at least a week's notice. Turned in a one week notice. Later in the day went to our scheduled breaks 5 minutes late because I was busy doing something at work that I couldn't just put down. So I came back 5 minutes late. Manager came up to me acting really mad and said I was fired for abusing breaks. I just laughed handed him my badge and started walking to my car. He tried stopping me saying HR needed to see me to fill out paperwork. Laughed even more and got in my car and left. Took the week off to relax before starting my new job. When he said that HR needed something say sorry, I don't work here anymore. Always fun when stupid managers try to control people that no longer care about their crap. I had pneumonia and I couldn't even talk, lost voice, so I asked my mom to call my boss to tell her I was severely sick and couldn't come to work. She called me the next day saying I shouldn't rely on my mommy to call in for me when I'm sick and that I was fired for blowing a shift. I was a hostess at a restaurant and was in grade 10 lol. When I was getting hired they told me I work Monday Friday only. Great. Couple months go by. Work no weekends. Plan family vacation for upcoming weekend. Leaving for vacation right after work. At 4.30 they tell me I have to work the weekend. I say I can't I have vacation. They say it's mandatory. Go home. Decide to go on vacation anyway. Call in Saturday. Come into work on Monday, fired. Spent the day fishing. What the actual freak? My brother worked part time in a hardware store. In winter, the low season, the store would stop scheduling the newest employees and would start scheduling them again in spring. My brother was one of the new guys and wasn't scheduled in the winter. In the middle of spring, he went to check when he would start again. There was a new manager he didn't know and she told him he wasn't on the employee list. Without a reason. Apparently they just assumed he wouldn't work again and terminated him without telling him. Since we have good labor laws, my brother got a few thousands in settlement for lost income. I got fired from Burger King because a co-worker let me use his vape on my break. When I was off break, I tried giving it back but kept getting ignored. I figured I'd give it back after we close but he left early. I went back the next day, my day off, to return it and got fired for stealing. This seems like it was premeditated on their part. I took a filing gig with a working interview. The filing lady was being promoted. The lady asked if I knew my alphabet. Yes I do. Thanks. Turns out her system was crap. Hazel Fretta was filed under H and Bob Dylan was filed under D. I dared question this and I was also not as fast as her on my first day. You know. The lady with the crap system she made up and had been doing for 10 years. At first I was insulted. I've never been let go for doing a bad job before. Boy was that a hellish control freak bullet dodged. I worked at this hotel doing afternoon evening shift and two overnight shifts a week. They listed the following reasons for letting me go. Claimed I was leaving property without clocking out because I wasn't on camera the entire time. The date they said specifically was an evening that I spent cleaning up the meeting space because it was slow. I was also not the only front desk person on shift. When working overnight I would sit on a chair to do the audit from midnight to 3am. Sitting on a chair at the front desk was not allowed, even at midnight early morning. Also when working overnight I had to fold linen so I would listen to the radio music through a bluetooth headset while folding and cleaning up the back. That was also not allowed even at midnight early morning. They honestly probably just didn't like me but after they fired me I went and got a new job at the hotel next door and started making a lot more money and was able to do all the things I was let go for.
I never understood jobs that insist you stand the entire shift or that won't allow music. I worked at a bar that was notorious for firing people. It well known that no one lasted for more than a month. And it was a big deal if you made it longer than that. I made it to month 3 when I was fired from not putting ketchup on a customer's table. They were eating shepherd's pie and salad respectively and didn't even ask for ketchup. Which raises the question on if they are doing that intentionally to avoid paying out benefits and if that constitutes a crime. I got fired for wearing batting gloves. I worked in a convenience store, so of course I handle cash all day long. Cash also dries the heck out of my hands for some reason. So instead of wearing latex gloves, if I have to take them off at any time, putting on a new pair sucks. I wore batting gloves. I did this for months until some customer said something, and I was told to take them off. I explained that they helped me do my job better, but the manager wouldn't listen. Went a day without them and it was maddening. Went back to wearing them and was fired a couple days later for insubordination. Ended up working at another store in the same chain with a former assistant store manager now manager. And I never had a single complaint about my gloves the two years I was there. Didn't wear a tie that I was never given. I was supposed to have a black tie as part of my security uniform. They never gave me a tie and told me not to worry about it. I worked nights anyway. Then some exec did a walkthrough and saw I wasn't wearing a tie and told them to get rid of me and I was out on my butt. Sounds like some crap allied would do. Back in the day, I had a part time job at a convenience store. The manager was swapping out franchise branded coffee grounds for Costco coffee to save money as he got a bonus based on store profitability. I knew, but didn't care. He wasn't robbing me, and let's be realistic, Costco probably provided better coffee grounds. When he got caught and fired by the corporate owner, he phoned me up and fired me on the assumption I sold him out. I'm not sure that someone who no longer has a job could fire me, but I didn't care as I had given my notice to the assistant manager a few hours earlier that I would be quitting in a week, or earlier if they found someone. I was able to collect a two week severance payment instead. I got fired from a McDix for asking too many customers how their day was going. Not because it slowed anything down. Mind you, I only did when it was slow. They put in complaints to corporate that I was being invasive. The first time I thought my manager was making a joke. I mean, not great since I'm eating this crap. How's your career going? I was given my work schedule for the week. It was changed after I received it and I didn't show up on a day I had originally been off. Manager called and said you've done this too many times. You're fired. I'd never so much as been late for work. I learned later that they found a way to get rid of every single person under 18. My boss asked me to come in his office and fired me on the spot with the excellent reason of you know why. I was pretty distressed and way too shy to protest and left with that. Learned afterwards that it was because I had a cold that day and was a bit tired. Joke on him, it's illegal to fire people on the spot in my country and I brought some well deserved justice on him. I got grounded for you know why and it was something that the person grounding me didn't know wasn't reality. A dream this person thought really happened. Company I used to work for fired people all the time for having nicotine in their system from random drug tests. They didn't allow smokers to work there. But by god they gave you free beer at the family outing events. It was an awful company. I was a new hire. It was Christmas time. So the office was hosting a Christmas sweater competition. I was appointed judge because I was new and thus impartial. I received explicit consent from each employee in front of the supervisor before proceeding to judge. At least one female co-worker accused me of looking at her chest while I was judging her sweatshirt. I kid you not. Fired. I got laid off because of COVID. But my supervisor and HR made sure to tell me they wanted to fire me with cause because my supervisor didn't want me working there. I wasn't one of her favorites. I had been with the company for 5 years almost to the day. I had more experience than my supervisor and knew every job in the warehouse and I was efficient at all of them. I'm sure my supervisor fabricated issues about me and embellished the littlest things so she had a reason to get rid of me. This was not the first time she had done this, and since I've been gone, over a year, there have been 5 or 6 people quit or be fired because of her, equal to almost half of the people in the warehouse total. 
I got fired for following the rules. In undergrad I was a tutor for the local school district, the main perk of the job was that if I needed a day off for a test or to study I could take it as long as I told my supervisor. Well I told my supervisor, followed all the rules and she's like you can't call off you're fired. Turns out when anyone else needed a day off they just didn't show and supervisors had no way of knowing since we just walked into the schools and signed our own hours so it looked like I was the only one that ever asked off. Didn't get fired for it. But I once got a final write up for taking a lunch break I was contractual obligated to take. Old company I worked at had more holes in their upper management than a flour sifter. Basically I got fired for stealing an original Furby back in the day by putting it into layaway. End of my shift came. There was a special edition Furby at my register so I said screw it. And put it in layaway before they closed up. Three days later. My next day at work. I was called into the office halfway through my shift and was accused of theft and fired. I asked them point blank, how the frick can you fire me for theft when the item is sitting in the store they claimed I backstocked the item for myself by telling people it was on hold, never happened. They demanded that I get it out of layaway and return it, told them to frick off, went to pay it off, was payday, and walked out the store. There was a cop outside that they flagged down. Told him I stole the item and the cop asked for my receipt which I gave to him with a huge smile on my face. Manager was still out in the parking lot talking to the cop as I drove by and flipped him off. Man, I can't believe the manager tried this crap. Unless, and possibly even if, they knew the cop personally, the cop would be rightfully really annoyed about this absolutely ridiculous waste of time. I was in college and waitressing at a restaurant that was open all night. The manager refused to make the schedule so that those of us in college would only work the all-nighters on days we didn't have class the next morning. He didn't give a crap if you had class or not, he would still give you an all-nighter. On one such schedule he gave me two all-nighters in a row on the days I had 8am classes. My shift was 11 6 so I would get home just in time to shower and go to class. So, I worked 11 6, went to class from 8 9 then 11 1 and then home to study, eat, and try to catch nap. That night back for another 11 6 shift, home to shower and go to class at 8. Had a break in class from 8 to 1 to eat and study, then had a 3 hour lab from 1 4. Went home, studied, ate, and fell asleep about 6.30 or 7 o'clock. I didn't wake up until 11.30 because I'd slept through my alarm. I called and said I was on my way and I was sorry I was late but I'd not slept more than 6-7 hours in the last 48 and I'd overslept. Manger fired me over the phone for using lack of sleep as a reason to miss a shift and he was tired of listening to this college kids whine about all nighters. I had never complained once about my overnight shifts and had never been late. Not once in my 6 months of working there. I'd started in May and was fired right near Christmas. Turned out he found an excuse to fire every single college kid that worked there and that left him with only 4 waitresses and a scramble to find new ones. However, a huge portion of the workforce was college kids and word had gotten around so he had to settle for really old ladies who refused to work overnights and only 4 waitresses that would suck to be him. When I was 14 I worked at a chip shop in my hometown. I only had the Friday night shift, but I covered pretty much every other shift people couldn't do, so ended up doing 3 or 4 extras a week too. I was also never once late. This one day I was asked to cover someone's shift later that day, which I agreed to. However, my dad actually had a pretty bad stroke not long after. I tried phoning the owner all day and got no answer. I finally managed to get hold of him 20 minutes before my shift, explaining that I couldn't come in as my dad was in hospital and may die. He fired me on the spot, as apparently I wasn't reliable. My dad didn't die, although was left permanently disabled, but the chip shop actually went out of business not long after, so silver linings and all that. I got fired from a bar I had worked at for 4 years by the owner who almost never showed up but had never had a problem with me before and no customer complaints. The reason? I was told I acted like I was in charge and I was telling people what to do. I was the security manager. I'm guessing it was the $4 more an hour I was making than anyone else. Mayo the brains in some people scare me. They changed my schedule on Christmas Eve, after I left and never told me. I got a call at 8.30am on the 26th asking where I was, 
I told them it was my scheduled day off. That's when I was informed that my schedule changed. The managers have to get you to initial next to a schedule change so people can't say they didn't know. I asked if my initial was there and it wasn't there. There also wasn't any phone call to me so further proof that no one informed me of the change. They demanded I come in. I refused because I was with family about an hour away. They fired me for being a no-show. I hated the job so I didn't really care. I was in a PR job that I was completely underqualified for. It was supposed to be an entry level admin role but she had me managing accounts, campaigns etc. I explained to my boss multiple times I did not have the experience. I felt completely out of my depth and every time I got something wrong she went nuts at me. I finally had enough and told her I needed more help. She said she couldn't help me and then fired me. Sounds like they wanted to force you to sink or swim and quickly learn how to do a much more high paying job so that they wouldn't have to pay someone with the qualifications to do it. I started a new job based on the knowledge and transferable skills I had from a previous job. On my first day in the new office another one of the new, ish, employees gave me the ominous warning. I don't think you know what you got yourself into. My boss had inherited the department and knew nothing about what we did, and couldn't log into the system without help. She said my co-workers who had been there 20 years would train me. Those co-workers refused to train me because they aren't my boss and said to just figure it out as I went along, but then refused to let me work on any projects with them. Then they complained to my boss that I didn't know what I was doing, so I was fired. Sounds like a bunch of people had jobs where they did nothing and got paid well to do nothing and felt threatened that the whole thing might be cracked open if they were made to train a new employee on their non-job. Small software company. I was interviewed by the president and the VP, who happened to be his girlfriend. He thought she was working too hard. She didn't want to give up any authority. I was hired as office manager. She didn't communicate with me at all about what I was supposed to do. Two weeks later he called me into his office, she was there, and said I wasn't doing anything useful and walked me out of the building. This is the one of those absolutely ridiculous reasons that makes sense. To him you probably were pretty useless but it's not your fault lol. What's your best fire me? I freaking dare you moment from work. Worked for a newspaper, editing and actually putting the paper together, arranging it all, placing stories and pictures where they need to be, titling. Quoting and sourcing everything. I was a one man team and used an overly complicated system that I figured out how to use really effectively. They treated me like crap. Set impossible deadlines and berated me for not meeting them. One day the boss tells me to fully put a paper done by the end of the day. Gave me no warning. I had no articles from the journalists and no photos from photographers. It was my job to collect it all from everyone and he wants me to do it in a single day? I told him no. If he wants it done, he has to give me more time. He tells me if I don't have it done by the end of the day I'm fired. I tell him that this paper can't function without me. He tells me I need to take the day off and cool my temper and that he'll do my job for me. Get a call an hour after I get home that he needs me to come in and do it and I can have as much time as I need. Promptly quit on that butthole. Frick your crappy newspaper. Best one. Only took an hour of having to do your job to make them say frick this. I was 17 and working part time at a fast food restaurant. Someone wrecked the men's restroom. Shat in the urinal. Rubbed crap all over the wall. The manager came out and told me to clean it. I refused. She threatened to fire me. To which I laughed in her face and told her you can clean it yourself or you can lose an employee and still clean it yourself. I don't need this job. Needless to say, I wasn't fired and I didn't clean that up. I still laugh thinking about it. Worked a job where I was the only one who knows how to take apart, clean, fix, and put all the equipment back together and do the weekly and monthly maintenance. Had a boss tell me one day that I was doing a poor job and not doing enough and that anyone could do it. If I didn't step up I would be fired or else as they had manuals for each piece of equipment. So that night I took apart all the equipment, weekly and monthly stuff too, cleaned them, and then just left it apart for them to figure out that morning. Then I turned off my phone after getting home for the entire day as I had the day off. When I turned it back on the next day I saw that I had initially received angry texts ordering me to return and put everything back together. This lasted an hour. 
Then texts saying I risked being fired. Then texts begging me to return. Then more texts trying to compromise with OT. Then an apology before nothing else for the rest of the day other than that the head boss wanted to see me as soon as I came in the next day. Came in the next day and over half the stuff was still not put together and what had been put together was put together haphazardly and would need to be taken out again then put back in correctly. Was immediately asked to be seen by my boss and their boss to explain myself the moment I was seen entering. Once in the office I told them that if they weren't there to apologize then just fire me then and there or drop it and let me put all the stuff back together. But they looked at each other and then told me that I could get back to work. Boss never called me lazy again. Should have asked for a raise to lol. I once called in sick to my part time job at Club Monaco. My manager told me that if I couldn't find anyone to cover my shift, I was going to be fired. So I facetimed her from the air and had the doctor explain to her that I needed an MRI cause they wanted to make sure I didn't have a brain tumor. Wouldn't be shocked if that shitbag manager still fired you. When I was 17 I worked a summer holiday job at Pizza Hut. I had transferred to my hometown restaurant from my university town restaurant. I was there for 5 weeks and hadn't been paid yet. The dickhead boss claimed it was because I gave him the wrong employee number. I hadn't. Anyway after 5 weeks of no pay I rang him on New Year's Eve, i.e. busiest night of the summer, and said I wasn't coming to work because I wasn't a volunteer and I wasn't going to work for free. He told me if I didn't go to work I may as well not come back as I would be fired. I didn't go to work and had a fun New Year's instead. Then a few days later I called the employment tribunal. I'm in New Zealand. And told them what had happened. They called my dickhead boss. He then called me. Offered me my job back and was nice as pie for the rest of the summer. You have to be a real dickhead boss to think that you can threaten someone that you've yet to pay for more than a month of labor. Especially when there's a whole government department just waiting for someone to let them know that their employer is withholding their wages and is only a phone call away. Ha, huh, I worked at an unspecified telecom a few years ago. I was a senior manager in charge of programming, third level support, and production support. A business unit bullied through co-changes, made by the business side through a side deal with a legacy programmer in the data center, circumventing my team. QA and production testing. That just had to get implemented immediately without going through any testing at all. I refused. The CIO overruled me. 72 hours later, phone activations had ground to a halt. Customers nationwide were screaming. And the CIO called phone conference after phone conference demanding timelines for when I was going to get this crap fixed. He kept screaming to have members of my team to get on the phone and explain themselves to him. I refused. Finally I snapped and told him that if he wanted me to fix his mistake I would need to get off the freaking phone go work with my teams. And the only reason they hadn't walked out yet was that I was keeping him off their asses. But we would all happily go together. 24ish hours later QA and my team had the bulls cleaned up and fixed for a clean rollout. This was all to avoid a 24 hour delay for QA production testing. I wish I could say that was the only worst time. Thanks for protecting your team. I have mad respect for leads who do that. There's enough madness for everyone to deal with without the unnecessary wrath of management in the mix. Husband was having his gallbladder taken out and was having complications before surgery. I needed to leave early from work for about 2 hours and my boss threw a fit stating I couldn't leave. I told her I had 300 hours of sick time I can use for myself and my husband and if she wanted to push I'd take all of it at once leaving no one but her to do my job. She said she'd fire me if I tried. I just looked at her and said I have to go I'll send you my DR's note. I wasn't fired. I was actually awarded that year for job performance. Over the first year I worked there, I essentially took over most of the tasks in my department which were previously held by other departments and was done badly because of it. This led to a massive increase in productivity. I then found out I was paid significantly less than what others were making and others in my position across the industry were making. So I go to my boss and tell them I had done all this work increasing productivity and I would like to discuss a raise. They said no. So I work there for another year, asking for a raise every now and again until I was offered a job that paid double. 
It didn't start for a couple months so I held on to that job until I was set to submit my two weeks. I asked for a raise again, thinking what the heck why not. My boss goes off, tells me I won't get a raise and says some very colorful things about it. It culminated with her telling me if you don't like your pay, maybe we should evaluate your future at this company to which I replied already have, I took another job and this was your last chance to offer me what I deserve. I quit, and walked out of that office. Friends told me that my sudden departure caused a massive backup of work that ended with my manager being fired for it. God I can only imagine how awesome it must feel for your boss to say maybe you should evaluate your future here and to be able to say to their face, already have, bye. Worked for Radio Shack and always butted heads with the district manager. He wanted me to use these ridiculous sales techniques that might work in a big city but were really pushy. The year he became our DM I won a contest for best salesman in the whole company, out of about 14,000 employees and I did it without being pushy and forcing stuff on people. He still tried to get me to use these ridiculous techniques each month when he would visit, but after I won the contest I stopped sugarcoating it and would flat out tell him that's stupid. I'm not going to do it that way. Being pushy is the best way to talk yourself out of a sale. As a customer when I am approached by those types, I will almost always walk away, even if I need what they are selling. I was a summer teacher at one of those Korean sat prep school that hired US college students for a summer, and then promptly worked them to death, although, I will admit the pay was pretty good. We taught 8.30am through 5.30pm with an hour lunch, but had homework to grade every evening, prep work, etc. Well, they were mainly focused on teaching English, but I was a math and physics major, so they had me teaching sat math and college prep physics, no problem. Then they decided since I studied physics, I should also teach their chemistry class. I tried to tell them I didn't know much chemistry, but they insisted. So I worked my butt off, refreshing myself on all of the stuff before I taught it, while still teaching another math and physics class. One day in the middle of this I got legitimately sick. I called in the night before, put the rules, and told them I couldn't come in. I took one day off, sleeping in my apartment and then dragged myself in the next day. When I show up, they pull me aside and say so how do you plan on making up the time for the classes you've missed excuse me well, we didn't have anyone to teach your classes, so all the kids are behind now, you have to make up the time. We figured you could just extend your morning class an hour for the first week aka teach over lunch, and your afternoon class could then start an hour early for the next week. Why didn't you have a sub teach my class then they screwed up. They said we don't have a sub. Well then, no, I'm not going to skip my lunch because of your guys poor planning. We'll fire you, and then you won't get your plane ticket remember so they replied. Go ahead. First, I followed the rules and gave you notice I was going to be out. Second, you just told me you don't have a sub for my classes. That means if I leave, you're going to lose all of those students that I'm teaching. That will cost you a lot more than the planet ticket will cost me was 19 and working a minimum wage job in a shop. Owner sold the business to a new guy, who had never worked in the industry and knew nothing about any of it. His first day in charge, he decides I look unprofessional and should be wearing a uniform. Then he decides the uniform should include a fluorescent cap with my name embroidered on it. I told him I wouldn't have taken this job if it had included wearing a fluorescent cap with my name embroidered on it, but he tells me it's going to be mandatory from now on, so I will be sacked if I don't wear it. Fine by me, I'll be leaving for any other job which pays exactly the same but doesn't make me wear a ridiculous hat, and I'll take with me my good relationships with all our contractors and suppliers and my knowledge of how the frick all your equipment actually works. Reader, he didn't fire me, nor was I presented with a spiffy new hat when all the other employees got theirs. I did leave about two weeks later though as he was an insufferable twat face with a real anger issue, and was impossible to work with. Was very tempted to pop in and visit wearing a cap with my name on, but I didn't want him to die from rage. I'm a speech therapist. I work in a skilled nursing facility. For the most part, they all suck. This is no exception, but the place I used to work, the boss was a scumbag. To the extent that the entire rehab staff signed a letter asking to get him fired. He was basically forced out. I eventually left, 
and came to my current job. I swung by the rehab gym and saw his butt sitting in my current boss's office. I kind of froze in shock. I thought he was interviewing for a job there. So I went to the boss at the time and told her flat out that if he got tired, I was walking out immediately. She got a stunned look on her face and quickly assured me that he wasn't working there. That was my first time drawing a line in the sand like that. This was about 5-6 years ago. I was the second in charge of our shipping department, making $11 an hour. The head of shipping had a mental breakdown, so I took over while he got help. About 3 weeks after he returned, the company released him because they didn't like him and I could do the job. When they told me they had released him, I asked if there were going to be interviews for the job, or was the job just mine since I was number 2. I was told they were looking, but I would have a chance to interview once that process started. Fast forward about 6 months and I'm still doing this job that pays around 50k a year for $11 an hour. We had some issues with staff turnover and process changes because the warehouse manager thought he knew best and would listen. They then tell me there wouldn't be a shipping manager, just a shipping lid, which would be an hourly position. I ask about a raise, gets told my review is in 2 months so just wait. I wait. 3 months. 4 months. Then one day, after a 14 hour night shift, I get a call from the WM telling me I have to come in right now. When I get there, he unloads on me for things that were beyond my control, and mistakes other people made. We start yelling, and that's when I told him. I make $11 an hour doing this job ex boss told me he got paid 50k a year to do. I don't need this crap. Give me a raise or I won't be back. I then went home and back to sleep. When I go back to work, I'm met by WM and ops manager. They appreciate the hard work I've been doing and are putting me on a salary starting at 45k since ex boss was there longer. I negotiated up to 48k. Nice. Please use your new title to look for other work, just in case. They don't sound very competent. For the past few years I've worked at one of the nicer restaurants in my small beach town. I'm one of the only servers there who cares about doing a good and I'm the only one who doesn't take a smoke break every 15 minutes. This past summer a new, very illegal, rule was implemented that if we messed up an order in any way we would be liable to pay for that messed up food. I usually didn't have a problem with mess ups so I didn't bring up the legality of this matter since I make good money and don't want to start fires in places that don't concern me. That until I rang in a cherry glaze burger instead of a cherry glaze steak, each stylized CGB and CGS in our crappy computer system. I fixed this with the kitchen but not before they had already started the burger. I told my manager and she just gave me a disappointed and told me that the rules are the rules. I then dived into both federal and state workers rights code and told her she would never see me again if I found any money out of my tips at the end of the night. Never had a problem fixing an order again. Was working in a restaurant. Already knew I was sick but our managers were buttholes and I knew if I called in they'd be extremely pissy. Showed up to work around 8am. By 9am I knew I wasn't gonna last the rest of the day. Managers still made me stay. Around 9.30 I was pre-bussing my tables and just the sight of half-eaten food pushed me over the edge. Managed to hold my vomit until I got to the dishwashing area but puked in a trash can immediately after putting my plates down. A co-worker saw me and vouched for me when I went to tell my manager I was leaving for the doctor. He said, even with a doctor's note, if you leave work today you'll be fired. I said, you have human waste in a kitchen trash can and haven't even done anything about it. It's on camera. I'm leaving. Showed up for work a few days later and didn't hear anything about it. Ended up quitting a few weeks later for a job at a couple considerably higher scale restaurant. Put in my 2 weeks notice at wildly understaffed job. 6 days later got sick. I call around and see if anyone can take my shift. No one is available. Tried to call out that morning. Crappy manager tries to persuade me to come in even though I am buffing everywhere. I non-committally agree to call in later in the day to see if I am feeling up to coming in anyway. Call back. Say I am still sick and will not be coming in. Manager blows up at me in front of customers. Being rude as frick. Eventually asks what I expect to do about the shift needing to be covered. I say I have done everything I am required to and it sounds like a management problem to me. Hang up and turn my phone off. 
I was elbows deep in an AT&T Unix machine that should have been replaced a decade before, parts strewn all over a desk, when the client came in to see what was taking me so long. Comma me, you've got three dead fans, one of the power supplies has failed, there's a bad CMOS battery and the video card is glitchy and refusing to allow the machine to POST sometimes. Comma client, so how long is that going to take? 15 minutes? Comma me, laughing. I can patch things up in a couple hours, but I'm going to have to come back in a few days with new parts. Comma client, if you can't fix it in the next half hour you're fired. I'll find someone that knows what they are doing. I stood up, grabbed my tools, and started walking. Comma client, where are you going? Comma me, I told her how long it would take, and that's longer than a half hour, so I guess I'm fired. My firing lasted about three more steps towards the door. Man, oh, man do I hate bossy people who do not even know how things work. Worked at a private medical college in Punjab, India. They wanted me to falsify patient admissions to get increased grants from GovT. I refused. They said that I would be fired. I was the only resident with specializing in orthopedics. I was let go. Then came surprise checking by Gov medical body. I was offered 3 times my monthly pay to attend for one day inspection. I asked for 5 times and they agreed. I ditched out at the last moment. They lost their recognition of depth of orthopedics with insufficient residents. No admission in ortho till next checking. That's freaking evil. I love it. 2004. Worked at a municipality department. One day the programmers update the work PCS and block pretty much everything and anything no internet at all. No authorization for installing anything. All games removed from windows. They even removed the calculator function for some reason. Then the supervisors started moving co-workers around and my entire team was dispersed across a gigantic building. For no reason. We were the top team in terms of results. The supervisors simply hated our guts for some reason. So me and one of the co-workers try to devise some way to have communication without having to travel for 5 minutes each time, across the building and down a floor, just to get to each other's desk and ask a simple yes or no question. We do this during our lunch break. Our supervisor butts in and asks what we're doing. We explain we're trying to save time and maximize communication and results. The supervisor, who doesn't like us anyway, says we should get back to work and quit trying to communicate through unauthorized means. Okay, we simply stopped trying to install messenger on our phones. One day later the supervisor is looking for my co-worker. I don't know where he is. I say so. Well then contact him through your messenger program. The one you told us to quit installing? Yes, we gave up on that, on your orders. She tried to get me fired for refusing to obey basic orders. I explained the situation to her superior. He let me get back to work and told me to ignore her from then on. I moved to a better post a few months later because she made my life unbearable from that day on. And I finally went and told the upper floor they'll either move me elsewhere or I quit. My dog became very ill quite suddenly and he needed to be put down. I was at work and I asked to leave half an hour early so I could be there for him. I asked my manager and she got annoyed and said there was no way and that I should have told her earlier. I said I'm sorry I didn't realize my dog was going to die in the most sarcastic way possible then walked away knowing she'd follow me. I then stood at my desk and typed my resignation up in front of her. She gave me the time off. No one was going to stop me from being there for my boy. I was working at a shoe store in a mall and I requested a week in August off for my wedding. My manager told me her boss wasn't happy about that and all I said was my wedding is more important than back to school sales. They didn't fire me, I said. They just stopped scheduling me and eventually my access to the employee website went away. That's called constructive dismissal and is illegal in some circumstances. I used to work at a small family owned grocery store for a few years we got our load in on mondays and thursdays and we got passed over one monday and the distributor said we'd get the missing load in on thursday so what essentially happened was a double load and my two receiving partners were out sick i was the only person in the warehouse receiving at the time and got to take on 15 plus pallets of groceries that needed to hit the shelves immediately i was specifically told to not go up front and to do what I could while the front end crew covered the aisles and cash registers. 
well. A lot of them were either lazy, untrained, or just putting in their hours so they could pay bills. I put in my earbud, just one, and get to work. I'm halfway through the checking in the pallets when I get called up front. So I ignore it and continue. Then I get called again. So I head up there and get yelled at by a new hire with a bad attitude to do your job and bag for me the customer was a regular and we got along very well. And she told me that she was fine and could bag her own groceries. Between the customer and the fact that I wasn't having it, I walked away. I had 3 years and 2 ranks on her. So I didn't give half of a crap and went back to my pallets. Then I get the newest hotshot manager. Who replaced the old hotshot manager. Who replaced the beloved manager who trained basically the whole store. In my face about having an earbud in on the clock. Which is allowed as long as you have on ear free. And said I could be sent home and not come back if I wanted to listen to music. So I gestured to the pallets and said go for it. These all need to be checked in and broken down. Have fun. I got to keep my earbud in. Comma so I had that going for me. Which was nice. Never make threats that you can't keep. Such a simple concept. First kitchen I worked in, they told me. The more jobs I learned, the more I'd get paid. Came in basically knowing all of it anyway. Six months later I had learned every job there except one spot. They told me if I learned that spot, I'd get a raise. I told them I could find a new kitchen. I was easily one of the best employees there. And that I was told the more I learned the more it'd get paid. And I still hadn't been given a raise. Head chef cracked and gave me a raise. I told him 50 cents wasn't enough. He was forced to give me another. Two weeks after that, they fired the banquet chef's assistant. We had a lot of 300 plus people events. And told him to pick his new assistant. He immediately requested me. I told them I needed another raise. I was told no again. Again I said I'll find a new job. Came in the next day and put my two weeks in. Yup, found the job that quick. Wound up making more money in that kitchen than anyone beside the banquet chef and the head chef. That's how I wound up getting three raises in a month. It's amazing nowadays that you always have to or almost have to jump ship before you get a raise that's worth keeping you there. I'm sure everyone's had that tyrannical boss who was so drunk with power that everyone hated him and he felt like that was a sign that he was doing a good job, right? About 20 years ago I was working as a delivery driver at a pizza hut and they transferred in a manager who couldn't seem to get along. The area supervisor point blank told me that he was on his last leg and if he caused any problems they were going to let him go. I was kind of the lead driver, no title or extra pay, but I was the one who trained new drivers and for some reason this guy decided I needed to be taken down a notch. Just harassed me and was on my crap constantly. Surely the office told him he needed to adjust his attitude, but I'm not sure if this guy was capable. Anyway, one day I told him to frick off. I was more valuable to the store than he was, and if he really wanted to show who's in charge he should learn how to do his job better. He flew into a rage, swept a big stack of lids off of a shelf and ordered me to rewash them and put them away. I just punched out and went home. It was the middle of the afternoon and I was the only driver at the time. About 30 minutes later I get a call from the supervisor telling me to come back because they were taking care of things. Got back just in time to see him sulking off with his termination papers. I don't typically take pleasure in other people's pain. But it actually felt pretty good. I hope he learned his lesson. But somehow I doubt it. Well not really work but still. I was an intern at a 3D printer company. The manager was a complete piece of shti. On my first week he made a co-worker cry because she sent an order to the wrong client. She apologized to the customer and he didn't mind. She sent the right one afterwards however the manager screamed and yelled at her for the entire week. It was a small company and I was sitting next to her at the time but I didn't know how to react to the situation because if I was afraid he would fire me and then I wouldn't pass class. Well the week after that I made a wrong sketch of an advertisement and he just completely lost his mind. He screamed and yelled at me. I stood up called my school and said what happened. They called the manager and was threatened to take his intern license away. I was left alone with my schoolwork after that and he never screamed at any of us ever again. Passed the internship barely. And he hated my guts after the incident. Peas. Sorry if my English is not that great. Company was doing badly in the 2008 depression. 
They hired an expensive new vice president to lead our division who asked me barely one month in to sack any two people from my team of software engineers whoever I felt like because she said so as layoffs were necessary to ensure long term stability, or some such. I steadfastly refused and dared her to fire me instead, and the issue really blew up at the time. Before they could fire any of us though a new contract came along which needed more people to execute than we even had on our roles. They didn't hire anyone new but we had to slog our assess to deliver the project. The VP got fired a few months later as she was way too expensive and wasn't adding enough value. Aircraft technician here working on an air ambulance on a very small island in the middle of nowhere. We used to be too lame. Licensed aircraft maintenance engineer. On this position cause we work 15 days 24 hours schedule but a new company bought our old one and the other guy left for a position closer home and after 6 months, they haven't been able to fill the position and have to send a guy 15 days each month, paying flights and hotel at costs 100 200 euros per day cause this is a very expensive and popular I'm from this island and after lots of years out of home I'm happy to be back. They want to lower my salary 30% or get fired cause I get nearly twice what they used to pay. You told me to accept or they will put another guy on my position. Yeah good luck finding two lame that want to live here when you haven't find one. Told my boss two weeks in advance that I was taking PTO on Monday and Tuesday. She approved it no problem. I take the days off and went out of town for a school thing. I come back into the office on Wednesday and I'm locked out of my account. I talk to the operations manager, my boss's boss, who was the person who interviewed and hired me to see what's going on. He told me that my boss said I disappeared and didn't contact anybody for two days. I explained it to him and he said no problem. I talked to my boss later in the afternoon and she is furious. Starts saying how I didn't tell anybody that I was taking PTO and thought I just suddenly quit. I don't know what the frick this bee was talking about because I told her two weeks ago that I was going to be out those two days and I have the emails to prove it. At this point I was the only person left on my team of four people who were there when I was hired. I was already planning on quitting in next month as I had to move for school. This bee had the audacity to threaten to fire me. I said, if you feel like you need to let me go for your mistake, go ahead. Ended up working there for another 7 weeks before leaving on my terms. Even got to use the operations manager as a reference for another job. The best is when there are written emails proving you are right and they still argue lol. I was hired on as a part time assistant manager, and then immediately told I would be working part time at two different restaurants. I knew things were shady as soon as they gave me two separate paychecks. Then, less than a month later, they had someone go on vacation and needed me to cover their shifts. Suddenly, I was working 80 hour weeks. At the end of the pay period, I took my checks into the office and asked why I, why I wasn't being paid overtime. They said that they weren't required to pay overtime because technically I worked two jobs. I looked them in the eye and said, this is my two weeks notice for one of my jobs. They said they needed someone that worked too. Are you formally telling me that my employer requires me to keep two separate payrolls so that you aren't required to pay me overtime? They said they couldn't afford to pay me overtime and I stood my ground and told them that I would work a maximum of 40 hours per week. After a brief back and forth, they agreed. Then, about a week later, another manager had a death in the family. They scheduled me for 80 hour weeks again without asking while the other manager took time off to grieve. Then, one day one of the payroll people came by one of my restaurants and politely asked, How are you I said, I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit stressed about the amount of hours I've been working for the last couple months. Then, she said, you should be grateful you are getting paid. I immediately told her that wasn't true. Because I was owed for overtime and not receiving it and then called the office and informed them that they needed to either write me a check with back pay for all the overtime or reduce my hours to 40 hours per week by the end of the day. Then, I told them that if I ever saw a schedule that had me listed for even 41 hours, I would walk immediately. They met my demands in that they reduced my hours. I ended up quitting less than 2 months later anyways, because it's really a shady business. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.